So, John, what's the most bored you've ever been while on holiday? You know what? It was Pisa. Yeah? Yeah, I went to Italy with my family when I was 19 years old. And mm. we went to Rome, we went to Rimini, we went to Pisa, and we went to Florence. Yep. Florence. A, a, a standard route. Yeah, standard route. Florence, amazing, beautiful. Mm. Rome, not bad. You know, good. It's it's pretty grand in places. Very good. Yeah, it's got some interesting stuff. Yeah. Rimini, it's all a bit kind of beachy, but it was okay to chill out for a few days. Yeah. Pisa, shit. It's boring. There's it's, nothing there's there. Not, there's literally the tower and naff all else. Yeah. <laughs> you go, your dad does the embarrassing, you yep. know, yep. let's the, take a photo. I'm pushing. I'm holding the I'm, tower I'm holding up. I'm the pushing tower it. Photo. Yeah. yeah. You, you cringe. Yeah. And then you're done with Pisa. Yeah. Did you go up the tower? We did go up the tower, so that was something. It was open. Yeah. I know it varies when it's open or not. We were on a good day, so we did get to climb the tower, which yeah. is fine. That was good, you know. Yeah. But yeah. We really overestimated how interesting. We were there for like three days. Once we'd done the tower. Three like, days yeah, in we like, Pisa? Yeah, we didn't realize. Whoa. We thought it'd be like cultural. We thought there'd be like loads to do. Oh, dear. We spent like, an, we did three days of Pisa and an afternoon in Florence. And it's like. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Reverse that shit. Yeah. When, I, when I went to Pisa, I went there on the way to Florence from that's Rome. That's the way to do it, yeah. Like just, I just, I, I stopped there for like an hour or two and just went on to Florence after that and that, that was it that was absolutely the right I, choice. I d- <laughs> didn't didn't go up the tower I was like mm. I, I don't care like yeah, I've yeah. seen it now I can say I've seen it I didn't take the photo of me pushing it up Good. I took photos of me high-fiving people who were pushing it up so they were doing a photo where it looked like they're pushing it okay. and then I was like meters in front of them taking my own selfie photo I'm high-fiving <laughs> them but I'm really big uh-huh. um it was uh it was fun my favorite bit about it was that when you buy tickets to go up it mm-hmm. you can buy a ticket to go up the tower or you can buy a ticket to go up the tower and in the visitor center and in the church that's nearby and made by the same architect. Oh, just like a package deal. Yeah. Sure. But why? Why would you want? Well, I guess because you're there for three days. You've got, you got, you got to do. fill your sound with yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh yeah, Pisa, there is. Uh, yeah. It's very a little shithole. If you're from Pisa, listener, fuck you. <laughs> Me. Fuck you in the town you grew up in. Some films are fine, just the way they are. Welcome back, everybody, to Beyond the Box Set, the podcast where today we are pitching prequels, sequels, and spin-off ideas to In Bruges. We'll also be pitching some drinking games and hearing from our listeners with the ideas that they have posted on our Facebook and Twitter pages. But first, we're going to talk about some of our favourite moments from the original movie and catch up with a bit of a plot summary. I am Harry, the host with the most love for the town of Bruges. Okay. This is a fucking fairy tale, John. It's a fucking fairy tale. I've never been. And joining me as always, the host who has survived the most cities in Europe is John Lucas. That, this is true, yeah. By some miracle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you've been to Bruges? I've not. I've never been to Bruges. I've never been to Belgium. Yeah. It's it's a gap in my travel knowledge, yeah. Really? Not even yeah. like passed through Brussels at some point? No, never. Oh, I have actually, I've stayed at the airport, but I didn't leave the airport. So, Oh, I guess I, sp- I went <laughs> out for like a croissant or something, but I, I, I'm not counting that. I've not spent any significant time in Bruges. I yeah. spent like a few hours on layover in Brussels on the way to Kiev in Ukraine. See, a lot of people say that if you leave the airport, that counts. I don't know. I'd rather, st- I w- I'd want to feel like I'd spent at least a day there. Yeah. I'm hoping to go next year if I, if I manage to get to the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping to spend a day. Actually, I watched this. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be in Rotterdam for two weeks next year. God willing. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and spend a day in Bruges. It looks lovely. It looks like yeah. a fucking fairy tale. <laughs> it's because it is a fucking fairy tale, yeah. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, now Bruce is lovely. I'm glad to hear it, yeah. So I was going to ask, um, I assume, have you seen this film before you suggested it? No, I saw it shortly afterwards. Oh, that, yeah, well, so you had seen it before this podcast. Yeah, so I, I went here, went, went to Bruges with an American friend that I, I met in Paris. I was traveling around. Yeah, you went interrailing, interrailing yes, yeah. around Europe, back, back around Europe, yeah. Yeah, and uh, it was his favorite film uh-huh. in, in Bruges. And so, he, and so he was telling me all about the film and just like, oh, and this is the bit where this happens, and this is the bit where this happens. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool. I've not, because I hadn't seen it. I was like, this, oh, so mean, this he, means nothing to had me. Had he come to Bruges specifically because he'd seen the film? Yes. Okay, interesting. Yeah, he made that like the center point of his backpacking trip around, around Europe. Great, okay. Um, and he was having a really good time. Oh, that's nice. That's sweet. Um, you know, he went up the tower and everything, and he was like, they don't have these bars in the film. Like, there's no bars on the thing. Like, They could have had to put the bars in because of the film, <laughs> I'd imagine. <laughs> Quite possibly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was it was a really good time. 
I'm glad, yeah, because I was wondering. And like, then watching what... the film afterwards, it's it's like, oh yeah, like like they definitely film this on location, and the film loves the location. Oh yeah, there's so many shots of just like this is how beautiful this little village is, and yeah, it's just nice to see all these those familiar shots when you've just been. Yeah, I did wonder what this film might have done for Bruges tourist industry. Because on the one hand, it does look like a fucking fairy tale. Yeah. And you've got one character who's like very pro it, but then you've got another character who spends the entire movie just shitting on it. Like yep. constantly just saying, oh, it's hell on earth. Everything he says is valid as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, it is kind of boring. There's not a lot going on for it. Okay. It's, yeah, it's the sort of place. It's not like Pisa. Mm-hmm. Like Pisa, you'd go for an afternoon. I'd say Bruges, you'd go for a weekend. A weekend at most. Okay, yeah. sure. Great. Yeah. And having been, would you go back? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'd say so. So it has resale. Because I, I would never I would, go back to Pisa. I wouldn't, like, go back every year or something. No, but if, you, if the opportunity arose, you'd go back to Bruges just to... Yeah. I think I'd probably go back to Bruges after every time I've watched this film. Sure. Um, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed this film. So. No, no, I enjoyed it too. Yeah. Very much, yeah. I enjoyed this film, and I really, really, actually really love this film. Yeah. I, I, it's my first time watching it. I've never okay. seen it before. So this was a new one for me. And I really, oh, I'm really... on to a good run. You are you? on a good run. That's two in a row, yeah. yeah. And I really, really enjoyed it. I did feel a little bit bad about how much I enjoyed it, though. Okay. Just because of some of the things. I don't, I don't know. I just, some of the inappropriateness of it. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Maybe that's... I'm not sure if it's the, the film being inappropriate or the character being mm-hmm. deliberately written to be inappropriate. Well, you know, the writer-director of this film also more recently wrote and directed Free Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I did know that, yeah. Yeah, and that makes sense to me because that film had a similar effect on me mm. when I was like, I did enjoy that, but I also found it problematic mm-hmm. and it made some weird choices mm. and i think they both make similar i can't remember it's been a while since i've watched three billboards but i remember that yeah. also having a lot of like very aggressive racism and just seeing seeming mm. quite mean-spirited in many places and this film had that vibe as well but it's also so well written yeah like the plot yeah. is the plot is perfect like the script is perfect the way everything comes together mm-hmm. the, the way it all just it's really satisfying every, isn't it? it's, it's so satisfying everything that happens has a payoff that is satisfying mm-hmm. nothing is there for no reason mm-hmm. the characters are really interesting the acting is just incredible oh it's amazing isn't it yeah i mean so well cast absolutely yeah so so like i think it's the best thing i've seen all those actors in really even ray fines i think so wow that's high praise yeah i i, I think i prefer his his character in this than any other character he's done okay and what's your point of reference for Ray Fiennes? Obviously Voldemort. Voldemort's the big one. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that really long, boring one I watched recently? The English Patient. The English Patient. Oh yeah, you did watch oh. that. Yeah. And we didn't even do it on the podcast. That wasn't even my fault. <laughs> I've, I've that, was my, that was my mum's fault. I've come so close so many times <laughs> to do The English Patient. But oh God. After Dangerous Liaisons, I was like, no, I know what Harry doesn't like. And it's hard, ve- hard veto. Okay, no, we'll never do it now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what else I know Ray Fiennes from, but... Mm. Uh, yeah, a couple of, couple of those things. Brendan Gleeson, um, again, Harry Potter. Sure. Yeah. Um, a, a couple of other things, but this this is, it's not like... He's more of a, like a, a character actor. It's gonna, rare to see him in a leading role. Yeah, I was going to say, this This isn't like a, a major jump for him to be something different. This is just, it's a strong Brendan Gleeson role. Yeah, he, this is what he plays, but it's yeah. re- normally his he plays like side characters who have like two scenes rather than mm. in this, he's very much the co-lead. So, yeah. Which is, yeah. And then Colin Farrell in this is oh. something else. He's... Easily my favourite Colin Farrell performance. Yeah, have by we, a, by a long shot. Have we had Colin Farrell on this podcast before? Has he cropped sure up? I don't think he has. Have. I don't think he has. I've not seen many of his films, to be honest. I've no, just seen him make appearances here and there. I was also thinking this, because I feel like he's very famous, right? Mm, yeah. But I was thinking, I was like, I don't know why he's... Fa- that, that sounds like a dig, but I don't know what he's famous for. Yeah. He just seems like he's always been well-known. But when I thought about like the film, I think he's just very, very good looking. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I think that's the same. He's just so handsome. But yeah. I was thinking like, okay, so like Brad Pitt's famous, I mean, for many things, but he did Thelma and Louise and it's like, yeah. okay. And then Leo, Leo DiCaprio did Titanic. And, mm-hmm. and you know, there's always a thing. Mm. I was like, well, what, what's the first thing Colin? F-? And I even looked at his like filmography and I was like, well, I guess Minority Report was a big hit, but I can't, I don't, I've never seen it. Mm. And phone booth i guess <laughs> you know, like there's things that you, it's like you look at his list of films he's made like in his early years when yeah. he was like a big celebrity and you're like well i kind of recognize that film but mm. i wouldn't say it was like a super breakout role mm. i don't think he ever had one i think no. he just like floated around in hollywood for a while and then made this and it, i think it might actually be this but he'd, mm. he'd been around for a while when he made he's, this he's still quite young though in this yeah he's only 34 in this yeah that was i think he's also younger even today he, he looks he looks way younger yeah, but I, I assume he's older than he is. Like, yeah, I, for some reason I thought, oh, he must have been about 40 when he made this. But no, it's he was 30, like younger than me. He was like 33 mm. when he made this. 
So yeah, I think he's also younger than I would have assumed he was. But yeah, I don't know. Well, especially because they keep referring to him as the kid. True, true, true. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's not a kid. He's no, in his he's, 30s, he's, he's but not sure compared to the other two. Yeah, but yeah, I just don't think he's ever had a defining role. And I think if he has one in his career, it's probably this. Mm. Like I think now he makes more. Well, that can work awesome. really well for actors, and yeah. well, clearly it is. Somehow he's managed to make a major career out of. Oh sure, no, he's out, doing a lot better now. Out, out, yeah. out of seemingly a lot of B movies, not not quite B movies, but you know, not like. I think now he's making like artsy movies. Yeah, like he did that film The Lobster, which I've not seen, but it's supposed oh, to be yeah, amazing. I've to uh, yeah, that. I really want to watch it. Mm. But he, I think he does more art house. He did that film with Nicole Kidman, uh, the Be- the Beguiled, mm-hmm. which is quite boring but also quite campy. Like it's half and <laughs> half. It's really half and half. Sure, but he's fun in it. Uh, but whereas in his early career, he was in a lot of like really dismal flops, like mm-hmm. Alexander. Um, yeah. You know, just lots of like, that was like B movies and flop movies, mm-hmm. probably because he was just handsome, but no one knew what to do with him. So. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely the best thing I've seen Colin Farrell in by mm. a long shot. So mm. yeah. He's abs- he should have won an Oscar for this. He was fantastic. Yeah. It's it, such a good performance. He's doing so much. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, but it's so perfectly pitched. Like mm. he's perfectly cast for it. Yeah. 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 After he killed them. I dropped a gun in the Thames, washed the residue off my hands in the bathroom of a Burger King, and walked home to await instructions. Shortly thereafter, the instructions came through. Get the fuck out of London, you dumb fucks. Get to Bruges. I didn't even know where Bruges fucking was. It's in Belgium. Right, I should do plot some of that. Take it away. It's quite a complex one, so it is. I'll help you out if you need it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is, but at the same time, it isn't. Like it's a fairly mm. easy story. But it all follows a lot. Yeah, it's, you, well, let's say how you get on. It's just a lot to it. There's a lot. So of moving parts. Yeah. So we pick up in Bruges mm-hmm. with Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell. They mm-hmm. just walk. They, they, they walk into Bruges, and it's clearly the first time that either of them have been there. Yeah, they're just off the boat or just off the train. Yeah. yeah. And we're not given any context. We get a little voiceover at the beginning from Colin Farrell mm-hmm. where he kind of obliquely references what we learn about later, he says, after the murderer threw the gun in the Thames. Mm-hmm. And then Harry, not you, Harry, the character in the film, told me and Ken to hide out in Bruges. Yeah. I didn't even know where Bruges was. Mm-hmm. Long pause. It's in Belgium. <laughs> that, really, that really made me laugh. That was a good, <laughs> strong laugh at the start. Like, <laughs> this film is hilarious. It's very funny. Yeah. Great comedic timing. Oh, no, yeah, it, it's a hoot. It's very, very funny. Yeah. yeah, and just excellent dialogue to go with it. Oh, yeah. That's what I mean. It's so wonderfully well written. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, yes, they arrive in Bruges, which is, for those who don't know, in Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, they, they go to the hotel or whatever, and uh, they ask to check into their rooms, and it turns out they're in a shared room. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's Christmas. By the way, everybody, we're doing a Christmas season. If you hadn't, yeah. if you hadn't this is, this film, this is very much a incidental Christmas, even more so very, than Black Christmas and very. Reindeer Games. Well, I mean, Reindeer Games was aggressively Christmas, actually. <laughs> what am I talking about? But yeah, this film, Black Christmas was, was it was subtle mm, in its way. About it was just set it, set yeah. in winter. In this, it's really like, oh, by the way, it's Christmas, and then they never mention it again. Yeah, I mean, there are Christmas lights, but it's not. It snows at the end. Yeah, it's not I'm really. Not, I'm not sure if that was snow on the, the set of the film that was happening. Sure, it's not really pertinent to the plot that it's Christmas. No, nah. but they've been put up in this hotel by the like head of the gang that they appear to be in because they're both hitmen. It turns yeah. out. So that's Harry, the mysterious Harry, who mm-hmm. is voiced by Ray Fiennes until mm-hmm. he shows up later. Yeah. Has told them to hide out in Bruges for two weeks. It's ages before we see him, isn't it? It's like two thirds into the movie, yeah. yeah. Like, t- and it's, it's powerful doing that. Yeah, no, the first two thirds of this movie, not a lot happens. It, well, actually, a lot happens, but also <laughs> it's like, it, it's just like a two-handed buddy movie. There's not really a lot else mm. going on. I mean, the girlfriend, the, the Belgian girl gets a little bit to do, but on the whole, it's really a two-handed yeah. story until yeah. he comes in. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and when he comes in, I don't think... Yeah, when Harry arrives, Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell, apart from one very significant moment, they're never together again. Because uh, yeah. when he arrives, Colin Farrell's already left. Oh, yeah, that's true. So yeah. they only come back, spoiling, jumping ahead, mm. when Ken dies. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Interesting way of just plotting it. Because the first half of it that are together constantly. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, never never apart, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so they're in Bruges. So, so, so they're in Bruges, they're sharing a hotel room, neither of them want to be sharing a room, mm-hmm. but... Uh, yeah, I think then it cuts to like the next day or something. They're walking, or maybe that same day, and they're walking around Bruges. Mm-hmm. And Brendan Gleeson is having the time of his life. Like he's got all his tours booked. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just looking at all the buildings, taking well, not taking photos, but he's like 
you know, appreciating he's the architecture. He's enjoying being a tourist. He likes to soak in the culture. He's being the perfect Bruges tourist. Yeah. He was like, me. We, we've we've got pretty buildings. Yeah. And uh, we and we and we've got gu- tour guides, and you know that's that's all you can offer. And he's yeah. he's lapping it all up. He loves it. Yeah, I really related to his character in this moment. Yeah. Like because I'm one of those, I love his history. So I I love like a walking tour. Mm-hmm. I'll look at all the old buildings. I'll do it. I'll <laughs> soak it up. Yeah. But I also have that thing of like when you're with a friend who's maybe not as interested in culture and history. You're like, but but look at it. It's so they, interesting. They nailed it. They absolutely yeah, yeah. nailed the it. The dynamic was great. Because also when I was in Bruges, we had this dynamic. Yeah. So me and uh, Andrew was the guy I was with. Mm-hmm. Um, he was really interesting. Like, oh, can we, and he was a he was a, a religious a religious man as well. Oh, okay. So he's like, right, can we go in all the churches? I want to see all the churches. Apparently, the, the blood of Christ is in one of them. Mm-hmm. Which now I know is he knows it from this from the film. film, yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think I went into one church and I was like, this is, sure, it looks like a church. It's great. Mm-hmm. And I was very bored. And then I just didn't go in any of the other churches. <laughs> I, I just waited outside. Yeah. <laughs> I think when we went to Amsterdam together, because I arrived a few days earlier, I think I was like, I'm going to get all this done before Harry comes, because mm-hmm. I know he's not going to want to go and see the, the galleries. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they absolutely nail like the the one tourist who really wants to be there, and the other mm-hmm. tourist who just wants to go home, yeah, um, or just go just go to the pub and get drunk. Yeah, Colin Farrell's character is very much not interested whatsoever, actively against any culture, yeah. any history. <laughs> Hates Bruges, thinks Bruges is a shithole. Yep, just instantly takes against it. Yep, like, I was like getting offended on the behalf of Bruges. I was like, what does this <laughs> what does this man have against this perfectly lovely little Belgian town? It seems yeah. like a lovely place to spend two weeks. Yeah. Like. But also, he, he's just a very bitter man. He, he hates everything and everyone. And we find out as well that he's obviously got his own shit going on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and also, he, I think he just doesn't like being holed up. I think having being stuck in one place is obviously mm. something that drives him nuts. So yeah. Yeah, it's obviously not good for his mental health to be there. So, no, yeah. no, certainly not. Mm. Yeah, so like th- th- they're out during the day, but then during the evening, like they might have one or two beers in like the bar of the hotel they're in. I'm, I'm, or nearby bar, I'm not sure. Mm. But they need to spend most of their evenings just waiting in their hotel room just in case harry calls yeah which ray colin farrell's character just can't deal with he has to keep going out yeah now there's a brilliant scene here i think it's the first time where he says like can we go to the pub Mm -hmm. that uh i had to pause it and rewind it and maybe this doesn't make it to the final cut and i said i said to louise just like okay let's just watch this again but imagine it's lara asking to go for a walk okay because (laughs) uh lara my dog because yeah, he basically says, can we go to the pub? And Brendan Gleeson says, no. And then he just sort of looks around and just looks really unhappy with himself. He <laughs> just looks to the left, looks to the right. He sort of looks over to Brendan Gleeson like he's got an idea. And then, oh, no, nothing. <laughs> and just, I don't know, he just did a really cute face of just like being unhappy and bored. And he... No, uh-huh. Colin Farrell definitely had a well. He has a very cute face. Yeah. But also, it was yeah. I can see he is like a human dog in many ways in this film. Yeah, he, he really is. He does have that like just very simple pleasures. He just wants to yeah. Yeah. He's, he's just he is like an enthusiastic puppy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really saw that too actually. To be fair. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget. I forget what specifically happened. So they go so out that... one. So they go out one night. They get really bored in the hotel room mm-hmm. and they they decide to go for like a late night stroll through the town because. Mm-hmm. Ray says, oh, maybe all those amazing cultural things you may be watching the day, maybe they're even more interesting at night. Yeah, and he, yeah, yeah. he plays him at his own kind of Yes. Game. So they go out and they come across... They stu- and, he, and, and like Colin Farrell instantly has a beer in hand. Yes, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and they stumble across a late night movie shoot. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. In which Ray meets a beautiful Belgian woman named Chloe, mm-hmm. uh, played by Clemence Posey, who's best known as being Fleur Delacour in the Harry Potter movies. Oh. Yeah, everyone in this movie that's why i texted you this is yeah. the fucked up harry potter reunion everyone in this movie without exception mm. appeared in harry potter as some without exception i think every main character i mean there's only like five main what characters. about the pregnant woman okay maybe she didn't what about the dwarf okay fine most of the main characters <laughs> appeared in <laughs> harry potter i mean mad eye moody fleur delacour colin farrell was in fantastic, fantastic beasts Beast. and uh Ray Fiennes Ray Fiennes Voldemort. Voldemort. so it's yeah. a lot it's a lot of harry potter happening here. yeah that's all i'm saying yeah yeah yeah. anyway <laughs> so yeah he meets her manages to charm her into agreeing to go on a date with him the next night it's weird how he does it yeah it's I, just I, I, he's I, just being a doofus but he's so i guess he's so pretty you know I, he, he he just talks about why um about dwarfs that he's heard of who would like to commit suicide because they're dwarfs very charming it's yeah. a bizarre conversation that he's going down you can see it in his face he's like why am i saying this yeah. but i can't stop now yeah he's, he's committed to the, <laughs> to the bit yeah 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 because uh, uh, the the film that they've the film set they've wandered into it mm. stars a little person mm-hmm. called jimmy 
And Colin Farrell is fascinated by this. He's clearly never seen a little person in his life. So he's just very much like, they're shooting a midget. They're shooting a midget. Mm. Like, this would be hilarious. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah, he's very much into that. And uh, yeah, so for, that's how, that's his way in to talk mm-hmm. to this woman who seems just charmed by it. But yeah, you know, I didn't love her character. I don't think this film was, I think this film definitely no. doesn't do well for women. I thought that it, I, the I, pregnant I, woman was a pretty good character, but she's only like, she's not really a character. As she's much. not in it that much. No, she doesn't get, but no, she has a, Big moment at the end. Yeah, and that's but, really that's really good. That, that's a great scene. She, yeah. yeah, but but Clary's character is the Belgian love interest. It's it's such a wet girlfriend mm. role where she's just like inexplicably in love with Ray after like five minutes. Yeah, it's like I like I I bought her when she was conning him. Yeah, when, I, was, when, I wanted when, more of that. Yeah, but but then after that she's like, oh, you can take all my money. It's fine. Like when when she bails yeah. him out and he's like, oh, thanks for bailing me out, Chloe. And she's like, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's like, oh, st- you're so wet. Yeah, like I stole, Why? Your, I stole your drugs. Yeah, you stole. She, he stole from you. He shot your boyfriend in the eye. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> and he's kind of an idiot. Like, yeah, how handsome can one person be that you need very to Very handsome. Well, yeah, very handsome. <laughs> and also, it's a bit disappointing because in Three Billboards, like, Frances McDormand's character is so good. Mm, yeah. So the fact that this film has no particularly good female characters, just it's a bit disappointing, but whatever. Yeah. 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 I was only would have liked a bit more from her. Sure, yeah. So he meets her, sees the little person, and then they go for a date the next night. Yeah, I love this date. So actually, well, first you're skipping ahead a bit there. So sure. they agree to go on a date. Yes. But it turns out that when him and Brendan Gleeson had been out, uh, Harry called. Yes. And left a message with who he thought was the secretary, but it's actually the, like, the co-owner of the hotel. She put a little note at the bottom. And yeah. It's kind of cute, and especially the way that Brendan Gleeson just went and apologized. Just like, Harry, he's he's and then she says a cock yeah 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 because he's left this like very just explosive strew and like fucking fuck you why the fuck weren't you were you know yeah and so she's had to write all this down to to the last fuck yeah and obviously he's quite embarrassed yeah 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 poor poor lady yeah i know what she what did she do to deserve this she's just trying to run her damn business while also being pregnant yeah she's got a lot going on she doesn't need this shit yeah i mean of of the different characters in this film that take a lot of shit she gets a pretty light serving oh sure yeah people there's certainly people who have a worse time in this film but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she's also not a criminal like she's not no in this yeah girl. like all the others are either criminals or racists or whatever so you yeah know. <laughs> yeah or both but yeah in fact literally they all are yeah they, they're they, they're literally all criminals yeah in different ways yeah she's the only just regular person in this film Apart from the uh, apart from the dwarf who just takes some drugs. Yeah, but he's racist, so you know. Oh, yeah, there's that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, they've 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 missed this message from Harry, which isn't great. So uh, then that evening, Colin Farrell does go on his date. He has to plead to go on his date, basically. Mm-hmm. While Brennan Gleeson does stay in, and he calls Harry back. Mm-hmm. And no, Harry calls him. He's just waiting for the call. All oh, right, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Harry calls him and asks, "So is Colin Farrell there?" Mm-hmm. And Brennan Gleeson has you can play the scene. He do, yeah, he does a whole bit, which is quite funny because all he yeah. had to say was no, but he's trying to like cover for him. So he says, yeah. "Oh yeah, he's just in the toilet." And there's this very strange. It, back go, and it goes on for so long, doesn't it's it? Like, is he doing a poo or a wee? Yeah, <laughs> is the door open? Is it closed? Like, <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah, and then he does this whole because he's committed to the fact that he's in the flat, even though he's not. Yeah, he does this whole bit about how oh I'm just going to tell him you can go. Oh you can go. Yeah, go 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 wander around the town. Yeah, I'm sure there's a bowling alley. Have a look. Sure. Yeah. He's like, there's no bowling alleys in Bruges. I know, but it's what he wants to hear. Like, <laughs> it really gets involved. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but ultimately yes he gets his message from harry which mm. is which, which is that uh brennan gleason needs to kill colin farrell yes because they are hitmen i'm not sure if this is the point or if it happened a bit before that we get the flashback to what colin farrell actually did i think it's slightly before yeah so you see colin farrell in the confessional in the church mm-hmm. this is a flashback yeah, yeah. In, a ch- in in london presumably or mm-hmm. ireland i'm not sure i think I don't well, they they've come from London. London, because he threw his gun in the Thames. Yes, you're right. They've come from London. Well, yeah. it's because they're all Irish. It confused me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's in the confessional. He's talking to the priest and he's confessing to murder. Mm-hmm. And the priest says, "Who did he murder?" And he says, "Well, you, mm-hmm. father." And uh, then he just commences shooting this this guy up. Mm-hmm. Doesn't do a very good job. No, it's like, his, it turns out later it's his first hit, which is why he's so haphazard at it. Yeah. I mean, he, he did it in quite the stylistic way of like going into confessionals saying like, I need to confess to your murder. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit much. <laughs> but like the priest is like leaning his head against the wall, listening to him. Like He could have just done one shot, yeah. Yeah, 
like even after doing his bit of like telling him what, what he was going to do, yeah, it would have been quite easy to, to make that headshot. Yeah, but his first shot is like in the crotch. It's not even, yeah. in the, just do a headshot, just finish him off. Yeah, yeah like well, why? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he pretty much, he probably like completely em- empties his, his clip yeah, he, into this guy. Yeah, he, he fired seven times. Cause I always count when people fired six pellet shots. Right, right, right. There were, I think there were seven shots, yeah. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> And uh, yeah, a lot of the, like the the priest does manage to get up and crawl to a doorway, and mm-hmm. um, he he stands up in the doorway. Colin Farrell shoots him multiple times in the back, like through the chest, and the bullets exit out the other side. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh god, that was a bit much. Mm-hmm. Like, because you're just watching this film that so far hasn't had a gunshot or anything. Yeah. And then suddenly there's this loud shoot up scene, and uh, then the camera just sort of moves around, and you see that uh, in the room that the priest was just entering, that the bullets were flying into there was a kid just praying like a little six-year-old cute little boy yeah. yeah and like on this piece of paper he said oh it's, it's so sad it's what he's written it's horrible <laughs> Is it, well, he was like next in line for confession basically after colin farrell yeah and so his, he's written down his three sins and yeah. it's like not doing my maths homework being angry being sad yeah it was, I was, I was being angry what i think it was being, just... being it was something like benign like being mean or being angry yeah. or whatever and then and the the being, being sad. sad i was like oh man and then this thing this, this piece of paper is then covered in blood and yeah. brains and mm. oh it's horrible it's, it's like it's, it, yeah, it, it's rough and the camera doesn't shy away no not at all yeah yeah it's a it's a, it's a very very hard hitting scene and uh, I mean, it completely sets up the film and then it gives you like, a perfect understanding of why Colin Farrell is so miserable all the time. Yeah, he's racked with guilt. Yeah. And to finish off that scene, Brendan Gleeson comes in and just takes Colin Farrell away and they run away. Yeah. The priest, by the way, was uh, played by Kieran Hines. Mm-hmm. Uncredited cameo. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. not in it for a long scene. No, he's in that one scene, but he's not even credited. It's, it's just a little weird uncredited cameo. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Weird. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, yes, so that's why he- Harry, not Harry, that's why Harry wants wants Brendan Gleeson to kill Colin Farrell because yeah. shooting a kid is against the code. Yeah. And as it turns out, Harry is a very very much about his uh, his morals and his mm-hmm. even though he's a gangster and it's, he's a hitman, uh, he's very much about his principles. And mm-hmm. one of the principles is you don't kill kids. Yeah. And even though Colin Farrell killed a kid by accident, that doesn't matter. He has broken the code. He must be put mm-hmm. down essentially. So he tells. And it turns out that the reason he t- he sent Ray and Harry to hide out in Bruges mm. was that he wanted Ray to have one nice memory before he, he died, basically. Yeah. And so then there's, then there's some quite funny back and forth where Brendan Gleeson's like, well, I don't really think Bruges is his cup of tea, to be honest. He's like, what, what the fuck do you mean? Like, <laughs> I sent him for his last good memory. What do you mean it's not his cup of tea? And he's like, well... It's like a fucking fairy tale. Yeah, it's a fucking fairy tale. Exactly, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then just like walk it back. It's like, well, you know, he didn't like it at first, but now, now he loves it. It's great. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now he's been instructed to kill his friend mm-hmm. and he's really depressed about it. He doesn't yeah. want to do it. He feels really shit about it. Yeah. And he goes to a bar and drown a classic like speakeasy kind of bar and drowns mm-hmm. his sorrows. Yeah. Props up the bar. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, uh, Colin Farrell has been having the uh, quite the exciting date. The date with um, the Belgian lady, Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. So they, so they start off just in a restaurant. Um, they don't order food yet. She's smoking, even though it is in the smoking area. So mm-hmm. I guess that's technically okay. Yeah, that's a weird thing when you go. Have you noticed that when you go to Europe, where a lot of the places, I don't know if it's still true in Belgium, mm. but I, mean, I noticed it when I was in Vienna a few years ago. They don't have the indoor smoking ban. No, right. It's so weird because we've been at the indoor smoking, well, you're pretty much all of your adult life. Like for well, me, it was. Yeah, the, definitely. For me, it was like, I think it came in like when I was like 20 or something, mm-hmm. 18, 20. I definitely, when I was a student first coming to pubs, you everyone smoked. Not mm-hmm. me, I don't smoke, but you'd come out and you'd co- your clothes would be stinking I smoke. Mm. It's weird now when I remember when I go, would go to Vienna and I'd walk into like a club and like three people in the club smoking it and you'd because back in the day you'd just like it was normal you wouldn't think mm. about it now you'd be like excuse me? Yeah. What, yeah. The, what do you think you're doing? Like, yeah. You get very offended by it. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's weird. Yeah. It's a weird thing to think about. Mm. But yeah so she, so she is smoking and then she goes to the toilet and mm. then this Canadian on the table next to them Mm-hmm. Um, who's just credited as Canadian man. Yeah. Um, he's on a date with his girlfriend or wife yeah. or whatever, yeah. Who has literally none of the Canadian stereotypes. No. Well, he's not he's not nice and polite, so no. you know. <laughs> he's not nice and polite, doesn't 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 say things like a boot. No. Um so uh he then says, Well, that's just fucking useless or, or whatever. He mutters something under his breath about how rude she is, yeah. Yeah. Uh fucking typical. And yeah, then Colin Farrell just says like, "Oh, what's fucking typical? We're in the smoking area." Yeah, and then Canadian just goes off on one, 
And then Colin Farrell just punches him in the face. Yeah. Knocks him to the ground. Mm -hmm. Potentially unconscious. Don't know. Um, the the Canadian man's girlfriend then sort of swings a bottle at Colin Farrell, which he ducks out of the way of because mm -hmm. clearly he's experienced. Yeah. Um, and then he just knocks her out as He just well. punches her square in the face. Yeah. yeah I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it is a whoa moment. It's like, it's like yeah. whoa. He just like knocked a woman out in a single punch. And this is the, the guy we're rooting for. Yeah. And then he, he does make the point that like, oh, I'd never hit a woman. I'd hit a woman if she tried to bottle me. Yeah. Which like, okay, I see that. You started the fight, but yeah, I see, I see that. I mean, personally, I still wouldn't hit a woman. <laughs> Even if she was throwing a bottle at me, I think I'd like run away. Yeah. I but sure, yeah. It's, it's again, it's, it's a sign of the weakness of the girlfriend character where he's like, oh, I wouldn't hit a normal woman normally. And she's like, oh, okay, I still love you. It's like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. This is a bit, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, she, she works she, in a rougher world anyway. She is so. also a drug dealer, so yeah. sure, yeah. She doesn't actually care, but. Yeah. I wish they'd just done more of that where she was like, I don't give a fuck. But instead she's just like, oh, you're so charming. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's not the fact that she forgives him for punching a woman it's more like they could have made that part of the joke that she's a horrible person too and she's like yeah. i don't give a i don't care who you punch mm. but no it's more that she's just like mooning over him and it's just like oh mm. this isn't very rewarding no. <laughs> but, yeah. i don't hit women i would never hit a woman chloe i'd hit a woman who was trying to hit me with a bottle that's different that's self-defense isn't it or a woman who could do karate we'd never hit a woman generally chloe don't think that god you're pretty I have to make a call. Oh, no. You've gone off me now, haven't you? Just because I hit that fucking cow. Well, yeah, he punches that woman square in the face, and then he's like, oh, I've ruined the date now. You're never going to like me now. I've punched mm -hmm. a woman. And she's like, no, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And then they go back and have sex mm -hmm. in her apartment. Yeah. And they're interrupted by her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, something, yeah. Partner in crime. Yeah. Who, it's kind of like that scene at the beginning of that really boring uh, Will Smith movie you made me watch. Um, <laughs> uh, with Margot Robbie. Yeah. Focus. Focus. Focus, where it's like a it's like a con thing they've got where yeah. he breaks in and ho holds a gun to Colin Farrell's head and is like, you're sleeping with my girlfriend, give me all your money. Mm -hmm. And then Colin Farrell just fights back, basically. Yeah. Grabs the gun off him, punches him in the head. Uh, and then shoots him in the eye. Well, the, the guy then says that gun's not got any bullets in it. It's just full of blanks. That's it, yes. So that's how he can shoot him in the eye. And then he shoots him square in the eye, which, yeah, yeah blinds him. Because blanks are not harmless. They're just not bullets. Yeah. They'll, they'll still <laughs> they'll still fucking kill you. Yep. That actually, Do you know, actually, a, an actor died on a movie. He was oh. on a movie set with a gun, like an action movie. Mm. With, with, it's one of those famous, like, Darwin Awards, like, stupidest ways to die. Um, <laughs> doing a scene with guns, and the guns mm -hmm. were filled with blanks for the purpose of this scene. Mm. And so this guy was, like, messing around on set, and he was like, oh, hey, hey, and he put a gun to his temple and just shot himself in the st square in the temple mm. with a gun filled with blanks and just died instantly because wow. it shattered his temple because it's still something hitting you. You know, mm. it's not nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, blanks yeah. are not safe. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a little PA for anyone who's listening who doesn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Just because a gun's full of blanks doesn't mean you can shoot it at things. Yeah. You're still going to hurt or kill someone. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so he, he, he shoots the boyfriend in the face. Mm -hmm. um, the boyfriend is pretty much disabled, let's, mm. let's say, um, from this. Instantly blinded. Yeah. And again, it's like it's quite funny. Like the um, He's like, oh my God, I can't see. And he's like, I need to go to the hospital. And the girlfriend's like, okay, I'll take you. And mm. then Colin Farrell says... Oh, well, I guess that means our date's over. I guess I've screwed this up by mm. shooting your boyfriend in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, no, stay as long as you want. And I'm like, come on, Chloe. Yeah. This is ridiculous now. Yeah. Yeah. I got really annoyed at her. I know Beast and a Dead Horse, but I got really annoyed at her character. Just come on. Mm -hmm. Have some kind of personality. Yeah. So he stays for a bit. Very quickly, accidentally finds her, her stash of drugs. And steals them, yeah. Um, also finds a box of live bullets, mm -hmm. um, which he then fills the gun up with. Yes. Just in case. I don't know why he kept the gun. I don't know what he was, at this point, what he was thinking. I think he just wanted to be safe. Yeah. Oh, no, he tries to commit suicide the next Oh, day. yes, that was it, of course. <laughs> so, yes. Major quite an, plot point. Quite an important <laughs> plot point, that, yeah. Although it turns out he could have done it with blanks. Yeah. Still would have killed him, but yeah. Well, you know, better better, better safe than sorry. You sure, don't, you, don't, you don't want to half commit no, suicide. No, yeah. that's, that's, that's the worst. No, sure. Yeah. Um, Ask Brendan Gleeson when he jumps off that tower. <laughs> 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 Get a midsummer flashback on that? Very much so, yeah. Mm. Ugh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so he, he he takes the drugs and he goes back to the bar mm -hmm. where, uh, well, first of all, I think Brendan Gleeson, did he speak to Brendan Gleeson? Yes, yeah, he does. Yeah, because Brendan Gleeson's propping up this bar. He's, he's just so miserable about the fact that he's got to kill Colin Farrell. Yeah. He's had like four pints in 20 minutes. And yeah. he's just like, 
fully drowned in his sorrows in a very Irish way. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, I tell you what, it's hard not drinking when on film you're watching people drink beautiful Belgian beer. Yeah. Are you just not drinking ever at the moment? Are you just fully teetotal? Yeah, at the moment, yeah. How long is this going to last? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a, on a, I'm not going to drink on a regular basis. Okay. I'll probably still have a drink at like Christmas and that. Oh, wow. What a rock and roll star you are. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> well, I'm tired of being hungover once a week. Okay. It's a lot. I think cutting it out is probably the right road to go to cutting down. Okay. Because then I want to have one beer. I won't be inclined to have five more. Unless you just have that first beer and then you're like, oh my God, I miss it so much. And then you're just like, glug, 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 <laughs> which is often what happens. So. <laughs> well, we'll see. I don't know. Say sure. So yeah, Brendan Gleeson, he's drank like four pints in the last 20 minutes. Sure, yeah. And uh, and then Colin yeah, Farrell uh, comes yeah, in, uh, offers Col- tits on cocaine. Yeah, Colin Farrell walks in just saying like, I, I, found, I found five grams of cocaine. No, I he's had one gram of cocaine. No, no, he's got I, four in his pocket. I was, was going to say, I found five grams of, of cocaine. Mm-hmm. I've still got four of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, he's just talking very fast, and he's he's doing high acting very well. It's very no, it's it's very funny. Yeah, yeah, it's great. A lot of great physical comedy. Yeah, and, and he, uh, he after finishing talking to Brendan Gleeson, he he, he walks over. To, well, he offers Brendan Gleeson a line. Oh yeah, and Brendan Gleeson's like, you know what? Yes, yeah, <laughs> I'm having a shit weekend. I'll I'll do it. So he takes he takes a pal he he takes the coke. Yeah. and goes to the toilet to sniff it. Yeah, and while he's in the toilet. Um, Colin Farrell walks over to go like upstairs or something mm. and just at the bottom of the stairs there's, there's a couch and there is uh, the dwarf and and a, and a prostitute as, and a prostitute as, 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 he, as he has already said to Brendan Gleeson in a yeah they've already had a conversation so Jimmy the dwarf from the film has come to this bar and he's brought a prostitute that he hired from Amsterdam mm-hmm. and yeah they're and, making out yeah and uh, yeah Colin Farrell just kind of looks at them for a bit and then just like pokes Jimmy just in the back of the head <laughs> Um, and it takes like two proper posts. Yeah, he just tries to yeah. ignore him. He's like, I'm just going to pretend this isn't happening. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had this whole conversation about like, well, why does your girlfriend look like a prostitute and stuff like that? And or no, no, wait, what does he say? Oh, where's your girlfriend from? Oh, Amsterdam. Oh, isn't that just full of prostitutes? And she's like, yeah, that's why I came here for better business. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he, then Colin Farrell just so immaculately delivers. You two are weird. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to get high? Yeah. <laughs> and so, then Brendan Gleeson just appears over ma- his shoulder. Yeah, I was going to say, it's- maybe the, the hardest I laugh in this whole film is when Brendan Gleeson, like Colin Farrell's <laughs> already staring at these two and he's got his like, he's boss eyed because he's so high. Yeah. And then you just see Brendan Gleeson's face just like crop up <laughs> over his shoulder. And he's also just like fully like yeah. boss eyed. He's just like got those, how the how he managed to do this like coked up look like it's so good it's so funny yeah he doesn't say a word it's just no, his face it's no. just his face he is a it's it's hilarious it really made me laugh yeah. <laughs> um yeah so the four of them go up um and they go up to a bedroom yeah, yeah and another prostitute just appears out of thinner is if, if, if you notice in a, in yes a, no there is a second prostitute you're right yeah there. and uh yeah now they're all high and the conversation gets way more inappropriate Yes, well, it turns out that Jimmy the Dwarf is a racist drug addict. Yeah. He, he starts going on and on about how there's going to be a race war. It's going to be the blacks versus the whites. Mm-hmm. And Colin Farrell's like, well, I want to fight with the blacks. Mm-hmm. And then we get a little bit of backstory for Brendan Gleeson. He says, well, I was married to a black woman and she got murdered. So what side am I supposed to be on? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's all very it's weird. Yeah. it's Because there's just a lot of things that are said that are just like, I, I'm not enjoying this, but I am. Oh, I think this movie like, does like, a like, very good job of balancing the comedy with like moments when you genuinely like feel the emotion of the scene. Yeah. And I, I think it's also probably down to it's good writing and it's also the fact that it's got like Brendan Gleeson's an amazing actor. Mm-hmm. And yes, yeah, so that bit where he talks about his wife is very powerful. Mm. But then also I laughed, maybe the second biggest laugh I had in the film was when he goes, two manky prostitutes and a racist dwarf. <laughs> and he just walks out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I laughed so much at that line. Yeah. So good. Because also, what's wrong with those two prostitutes? They're fine. No, they're not. They're not they're they're nothing wrong. But just it, his, one like, of them had one line. <laughs> yeah, no, they're fine. But it's just like just the exhaustion in which he delivers that line. Yeah. Two manky prostitutes and a racist dwarf. I'm out. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> this film is hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah. I really enjoyed this. I'm so glad I picked it. Yeah. Two monkey hookers. And a racist dwarf. I think I'm heading home. Yeah, and so we'll cut to the next day. Mm-hmm. Well, Ken goes and collects a gun from one of Harry's gangland associates, mm-hmm. which is the alcove guy. Yeah, who I felt was supposed to be a bigger character. Yeah, 
Jeremy was just one of those, you know, quirky supporting characters. Yeah, because like he comes back later in the film, and then yeah. they've got in jokes about him later, and I'm like, well, well, I read sure, it. I didn't really get that. Yeah. I was reading, as I always do, like the IMDb mm. trivia afterwards, and like the, I also did the Wikipedia plot summary just so I made sure I had not missed anything. Yeah. Apparently, he's supposed to be Chloe's boy, the blind guy. The, the guy gets shot in yeah. the face. He's supposed to be his dad. I did not get that at all. No, I was wondering why that guy was there. No, I I'd, just assumed because all the gangsters I'd, in Belgium spend just hang out in the same places. I'd, I'd assumed that like he was also getting a gun to try and kill. Yeah, Bart exactly. Bart, like, but, but I found that's whole a whole relationship that was not explored in the film. But mm. sure, yeah, yeah, okay. So, but anyway, Ken. Is this based off a book or anything? No, this is an original. Okay. Uh, Martin McDonough, who wrote this in Free Billboards, he's written a lot of plays, so he's he's good at writing. Like I was, th- I was thinking, you stuff. could really tell. Yeah, this this would be this would be a play, really, definitely, because it's like I said, it's just. Two characters for the most part, and then a third one at the end. So, yeah. yeah. And a, a bunch of side and characters. The sica- here the and the side characters and, and, and the, There's no side characters that are ever just ignored. No, no, everyone has an other important than, part to play. Other than maybe like the fat American people at the start. Mm. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about that. We'll, oh, we'll come back to it at drinking games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm not <laughs> maybe that was the most I laughed. I, could, I laughed a lot. I, I, think, a lot. I, I think that from the first time I watched that years ago, I've. I've Forgotten lots of this film. Yeah. Um, I think that was the that was the joke that stuck with me. Yeah, you're never fed up there. You guys are fucking elephants. Yeah. <laughs> it's what just what he's, it's it's not so much that. It's, it's then when he like when the guy when the, the American guy starts chasing, him, he's like, oh, fuck off, fatty. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so funny. <laughs> it's horrible. It's awful, it's but really it's really horrible. It's just it. I think Colin Farrell acts the character like the character is a little kid, yeah. and I think that's what makes it so charming because he's yeah. being really rude to people and really means people a lot in this film. Whether it be the fat Americans or the dwarf mm. or, you know, anyone. But he always delivers it like he's just a, a 10-year-old boy mm-hmm. it, trapped in a 35-year-old man's body. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what makes it really charming. You um, just can't help but be like, oh. And I love how that scene finishes with Brendan Gleeson coming out just like, oh, guys, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of doing that. You know, the corridors are way too thin. Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> fuck off. And like, he actually means it genuinely. Yeah, he's, he's just, just being nice. He's yeah. just trying to be nice. Just like, don't... Yeah. And then did he clock that they came the back? The callback, yeah, 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 like yeah. an American had a heart attack at the top. Like, yeah, that is that guy had a shit day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> but yeah, where were we? Um, so yeah, Ken collects the gun. Brendan Gleeson collects the gun, and goes to do it. Because his... I, I can tell you that stairway is very thin. Really, it yeah. is very. Uh, trying to pass somebody, it's pretty much impossible. Mm. During COVID times, it must be closed. Sure, no, I'm sure <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'm sure the. I'm sure the guy behind the counter is not letting anyone yeah. through the door. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he gets the gun and he goes to do what he's been told to do, which is to mm. kill Colin Farrell. But he's mm-hmm. not feeling good about it, but no. it's what he's been told to do. So he does. He goes looking for him. He finds Colin Farrell sat in, satting. He finds Colin Farrell sitting on a park bench mm-hmm. and he kind of approaches from behind. He's mm. like, I'm really sorry, Ray. Points a gun at the back of his head. Yeah. Just as he's about to potentially pull the trigger, mm-hmm. Ray pulls a gun out of his own pocket mm-hmm. and goes to shoot himself in the temple. Yeah. I don't know why I'm doing so much... So much miming. miming just for me. Just for your benefit, but yeah. that's how I'm choosing to explain it. Right. And so instinctively, Brendan Gleeson is like, no, and he stops him from committing suicide. Mm-hmm. And then Colin Farrell turns, jumps, turns around and sees that... He's holding a gun. Yeah, so he immediately clocks, oh my God, you were going to assassinate, you were going to kill me. Yeah. And he's like, well, you're going to kill yourself. He's like, I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> this film's got so many great jokes. It's got so many great lines. It really, the, the, the script really pops. It yeah. really sparkles. Yeah. But then, it, yeah, again, it cuts from this, like, that's really funny, but then it gets very sad. And yeah. then it's like, then it's Colin Farrell fully breaks down. He's, you know, how guilty he feels for the fact that he killed a little kid and how he just wished he doesn't want to be alive anymore. And then, mm-hmm. Ray kind of tries to comfort, sorry, and then Brendan Gleeson tries to comfort him, and then they end up s- sitting on like the slides, and just like he's like literally cradling him in his arms, and yeah. just he's, he's crying, and he's like, and he says like, <laughs> like, he says this lovely thing, he's like, I killed a little boy, there's no coming back from that, and Brendan Gleeson says, well then save the next little boy, which is a lovely line, yeah. and then, and then Ray just goes, I'd have to be a doctor for that, I don't, there's exams, I can't do that, <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that could have been the start to, like, a superhero movie. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but no. <laughs> but then, ultimately, Brendan Gleeson is, like, he convinces Colin Farrell not to kill himself, and he's like, look... He explains, obviously, that he's been told to kill him. He's like, look, mm. Harry's told me to kill you. I'm going to give you this money. Get a train. Don't tell me where you're going. Mm-hmm. Just go and start a new life. Don't yeah. go back to London for at least seven years. Just travel around Europe, make yeah. a new life for yourself. Go. 
puts him on a train and then he, he phones Harry mm-hmm. and, uh, and and just rather than try and hide it, he's like, look, here's the deal. Listen to this. This is the sound of the trains. That's Ray getting away. I've let him go. I don't care. If you mm-hmm. want to come and kill me, I'm going to stay in Bruges. Yeah. That's the situation. Yeah. It's a fucking fairy tale here. Yeah. It hangs up. <laughs> Great. And then that's when we first and see And we Ray finally Fiennes. get a proper introduction to Ray Fiennes. What an introduction it is. Ray Fiennes doing a spot on Danny Dyer impersonation. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a full the, Danny Dyer the accent. The only person doing an accent in this film, it seems. Yeah. No, because Brendan, yeah, the other two are legit Irish. Like, I, I said at the start of the film when I was watching it, just like, it's nice to watch a film where, where actors are just allowed to do whatever accent they want to, hmm? as in sure. their basic accent. Sure, yeah. And then suddenly Ray Fiennes coming in and I'm like, oh. Doing the most, okay. yeah, doing the biggest accent. Because yeah. <laughs> it is like... He's having fun with it, though. It, it's a lot of fun, but he's not just doing Cockney, he's doing full Danny Dyer Cockney. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so he starts off just getting angry at his phone and just starts smashing his phone against the desk. Yeah. And then like bits of it fall off the desk, he picks them up again and then just starts stabbing the phone with the... Yeah, with he's the, just having, with, he's with, having with a tantrum, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. It looks like it's Christmas morning. Like yeah, yeah. His family are just in the other room, like his wife and two kids, two or three kids. Mm. They're just like sat round the Christmas tree waiting to open their presents. Yeah. And he's having like a, a full on tantrum in his office. Yeah. His wife walks in and says like, Harry, it's a fucking inanimate object. Stop it. And then he just replies like, you're a fucking inanimate object. <laughs> um, which it's again, it's one of those things that just makes you laugh. But then like, oh, he's just, that's, this isn't fun. Oh, I don't know. That 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 insult it, is so absurd. I can't help but find that funny. Yeah, right? but then it's like he says that he's got to go to Bruges. Yeah, he's got to go, go and, and he, he like apologizes really sincerely for being it's, so mean. Yeah. I loved it. The apology was so great. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'm really sorry that I called you an inanimate object. I did not mean that. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you, you just know that he's called her load things over the past, and he's probably been to marriage counseling. And yeah. But like, like they've, they've, they've they've had to work it out, and so now he he's worked out how to apologize. Yeah, that, but that's the thing. Like in an average, like just run of the mill, bottom of the barrel kind of action thriller comedy, whatever. Like, yeah, he you'd, he'd have the tantrum and he'd fly off. You, the fact that he sh- they have the apology scene and they leave that in the film, mm. that's why this film works because yeah. it like, gives them like proper whole characters. Where you're like, oh, he probably is actually he, he does love his wife. He's not just some dick. Like mm-hmm. he actually is. But you know, much as he obviously says horrible things to her, mm-hmm. he's doing his best at this moment. Like he's. Yeah, it gives the character even the, these smaller characters just a little bit more of a backstory, which mm-hmm. I really liked. So yeah, yeah. I was wondering how much they were going to swear in front of the kids. I thought that was going to be a running joke. Yeah, yeah. Sure. He was just going to use lots of really harsh swear words in front of them, mm-hmm. but uh, but not no. so much. Although about them later, but not too. Yeah. Late, no. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so he goes to Bruges mm-hmm. and very quickly meets up Brendan Gleeson. Yes. Um, they meet outside a bar and. Well, Brendan Gleeson's waiting for him in a, yeah. a in a, in a public space, so he knows that. Ray finds Harry yeah. isn't going to just shoot him in the middle of a plaza. Yeah. So they sit down and have a beer together. A very tense beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they talk it out and the script really shines again. And It's like, great dialogue, yeah. I, I love the... They, they do this a lot from here on out where they just agree like, okay, well, let's go and shoot each other. So- um, but like... Where, 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 like, we can't do it here, obviously. Yeah. There's people around. So like, should we go... Oh, let's go to the top of the tower. Mm. And like, there's so much between deciding that they each, they each want to kill each other mm. and getting to that point of where they actually try and kill each other mm. and they're both nobody's there's no deception going on there's no secrets no. it's like they've it's interesting the whole relationship between the three gangsters is very much like well these are the rules and these are the things that we do yeah because like later on when um jumping ahead a little bit when harry and ray colin farrell are like in the hotel and the pregnant lady's not letting them have the shootout and she's yeah. like why don't you just both just like put your guns down and have an actual conversation and, yeah. and harry's like we can't do that this is the shootout like yeah. this is, it's like this is how it's done <laughs> yeah. this is just how it works yeah we're gonna kill each other that's just how things go i loved it when ray said at this point can we just let the pregnant lady out of the hotel like obviously we don't want to shoot a pregnant lady and yeah. harry's like yeah sure sure I, pr- I promise not to shoot you until she's out of the hotel yeah and then she's like no this is my hotel yeah go and have a shootout somewhere else no yeah she was fabulous yeah, yeah. but we'll, we'll get to her I, I love the way that she just puts her foot down on it and just like nope if if me being here is going to stop you shooting yourselves i'm going to be yeah here. she's a badass she's yeah. an absolute badass but yeah. but yeah to, we'll get to her we'll fast rewind a little bit to yeah, the, yeah, this yeah. conversation so yeah it's Brendan Gleeson and Ray Fiennes and uh, Brendan Gleeson basically explains why he let Colin Farrell go and he's mm-hmm. like look he has potential to be a better person he mm-hmm. he made a horrible mistake it was his first ever hit job he's not 
cut out for the life that we live. He can become a better person. You can become a bigger cunt. That's the thing. Yeah. He's like, he can become a better person. All you're going to do is get a fucking worse and become yeah. a bigger cunt. And he just does whole, this whole thing. He's like, what are you going to do? You can just get, be a bigger cunt and have cunt kids. And he's like, hey, don't talk about my cunt kids. He's like, fine, <laughs> fine. I'll take it back about the cunt kids. But he's still a cunt. Like, it's, it's great. It's just... <laughs> so good. It's so funny. Yeah. Ken, if I had killed a little kid accidentally or otherwise, I wouldn't have thought twice. I'd have killed myself on the fucking spot. On the fucking spot. I'd have stuck the gun in my mouth on the fucking spot. That's you, Harry. The boy has the capacity to change. The boy has the capacity to do something decent with his life. Excuse me, Ken. I have the capacity to change. Yeah, you do. You have the capacity to get fucking worse. Ah, oh, yeah, now I'm getting down to it. Harry, let's face it. And, and I've been funny. I mean, no disrespect. But you're a cunt. You're a cunt, Nell. You've always been a cunt. And the only thing that's going to change is you're going to become an even bigger cunt. Maybe you have some more cunt kids. Leave my kids fucking out of here. What have they done? You fucking retract that bit about my cunt fucking kids. I retract that bit about your cunt fucking kids. You insulted my fucking kids? That's going overboard, mate. I retracted it, didn't I? Still leaves you being a cunt. You've fucking got that. But they, yeah, they agree to go up to the bell tower to mm-hmm. hash it out. Yeah. And then they get up to the top of the bell tower. Well, well, by this point, we've actually skipped over. Sorry. Um, so Colin Farrell on his train away from Bruges, mm. the train stops seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, somebody somebody walks down, like the, the conductor or somebody, he walks down the aisle, he finds Colin Farrell and says, like, is, are, are, you, are you Irish? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Colin Farrell makes up a fake, a very obviously fake name. <laughs> like he even pauses like bef- before the surname. Yes. <laughs> And he, just, he really sells it in his face as well. Just like, you didn't buy that, did you? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out the Canadians have uh, put out an arrest for him. Yeah, the Canadians who he punched in the restaurant on his date with Chloe yeah. are on the same train. Yeah. And they've spotted him. And so he gets arrested and taken back to Bruges. Yes. But Chloe bails him out of prison. Yeah, because uh, she's a fucking pushover. And uh, they go for a date. Um, again, in, in the main town square. Yeah. Just across. Yeah, so they're Martin. oblivious to the fact that Harry and Brendan Gleeson are literally meters away from them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Completely oblivious. Yeah. So Brendan Gleeson and Ray Fiennes go up the top of the bell tower and Brendan Gleeson is incredibly zen about his face. He's like, look, I'm not going to fight you. Mm-hmm. Like, I, if you want to kill me, kill me, but I'm not, I'm not fighting. Mm. And then he kind of disarms him by saying like, look, I know I called you a cunt just like five minutes ago, but actually I love you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a, bit yeah. a, yeah. a bit of a turnaround, but he's like, look, I respect you and I love you and I'll take whatever's Happen, gonna happen if you need to shoot me shoot me but i'm not gonna kill you I'm, yeah. I'm not interested in fighting i understand that this is how it's got to be yeah and he's just like completely zen mm-hmm. and then ray finds it's just like well i can't shoot you if you're gonna be like that can yeah. i so <laughs> and he just shoots him in the fire instead he's like well fine i'll shoot in the leg you can't completely get away with this but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah shoots him in the leg at the mm. top of the tower yeah like come on no he's not thought that through in the slightest shoot, like, shoot, shoot him in the arm or something yeah, well, then you see that he has to, like, carry him down. So yeah. he's clearly not thought it through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, so they get, like, a short distance down the lots of stairs that that tower has. Yeah. Meanwhile, the the half-blinded man who doesn't mm. like Colin Farrell... Um, is also there. This is a, such a great, like, you can movie moment when all these supporting characters suddenly just coalesce in the same place. Yeah. Because the, 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 it's probably worth mentioning the dwarf always also shows up at this point. Oh, yeah. Because he's sh- still shooting the film. Mm-hmm. But for this particular scene, he's dressed as a little boy in like yeah. a school outfit. Yeah. Which will come back in yeah. a little bit. But just put uh, him out there. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, so the half blind man runs up the stairs and says, Colin Farrell's down there. He's just down there. Just, have, just, just having dinner with a woman. Yeah. And so then Ray finds and... Just, Brendan Gleeson. Brendan Gleeson. We've got a problem with names here. Mm. So yeah, Ray Fiennes and Brendan Gleeson, they look at each other and they instantly start fighting again yeah. to try and kill each other again mm-hmm. um, because they they each know that Ray Fiennes is going to try and kill Colin Farrell yeah. and Brendan Gleeson doesn't want that to happen. Yeah, it's like they have no they have no real argument with each other. They mm. seem like they're like old, old friends, mm-hmm. but they're both fully committed to their positions, which yeah. is Brendan Gleeson is like, the kid has to be let go. And Ray finds like the kid has to die. Yeah. And so they're both completely intractably set on those motions. And so when they realize that he's literally just outside and one of them has to either win or lose, mm-hmm. they immediately start fighting. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, they, they start, start wrestling over this gun and it doesn't go Brennan Gleason's way because he's already weakened. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, he gets shot in the neck. Yeah. And yeah, the, the blood splurts. He's bleeding out yeah. everywhere. But like, he, he's not dead, but he's he's not got long for this world. Yeah, he's, yeah. And so then Ray Fiennes just rushes off downstairs. Brennan Gleeson thinks for a minute and he picks up the gun and then just starts crawling up the stairs. Yeah. And it's a really good bit it's of the movie. It's a great, yeah, it's very emotive. I mean, give me an old an old Irish ballad. Because <laughs> it plays like, what, <laughs> yeah, it does, it? what's the song? It's like, it's a really famous one. It's like, it's not, it's not like, oh, Danny Boy, but it's in, it's in that, it's in that vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, you know, I've, 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 I'm Irish. Stuff like that always gets me. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he go, he he goes up to the top of the tower and he, mm. he he's he's thinking that like you know maybe I can shoot Ray Fiennes as he comes out of the bottom. No, I think he knows immediately what he has to do. Well, because then he looks down and he sees that it's all foggy down there. Oh, is, okay, and, maybe, okay, and, and, and so then he's because like earlier on in the film he does point his hand down there like as though he's pretending to shoot somebody. Oh, sure. Okay, so yeah. I think he was just thinking like, could I? He's a hitman. He's could I do that? This. Yeah, sure. Could I do this? Mm. So yeah, this then there's fog and he's like, well, great, I can't do that. Yeah. So instead, he stands up on the wall. The uh, at, at the top of the tower mm-hmm. and this uh, is definitely why there's now a barrier at this tower just so yeah you know, there's no question about <laughs> it <laughs> and he just like drops lots of change out there just to make sure that there's, a, there's no tourists mm. at his landing spot did you notice that even that this is how well scripted this film is even the bit with the coins is mm. a callback to something else is it because do you remember early in the film when he goes to when he first tries to go up the tower mm. and he's like i don't have a, i don't have five euros i've oh, got yeah, 490 yeah. and he's like let me count my coins yeah and he puts all his little coins on the thing yeah and the grumpy belgian <laughs> like guy is like mm-hmm. It's five dollars. It's five euros, mm-hmm. not a penny more or less. Mm-hmm. He's like, I've got four dollars ninety. Come on, or yeah. four euros ninety. And he's like, five euros. And he's like, Are you happy with the job that you do? <laughs> and he out. That's why he's got so many coins because he couldn't get rid of them. Yeah, it's just so well scripted. <laughs> Loved it. I love all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, carry on. Um, yes, yeah, so he drops the coins just so there's nobody standing at the bottom. Yeah, and then he jumps himself. Oh, this was gross. You s- you see everything. He you? falls so, so, like a so, sack so, of spuds. So, so, <laughs> So first of all, you you see from his point of view, mm. jumping off the tower. I love that he straightens his tie before he goes. Yeah. Just little touches like that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so you, you see, you see, for the, you see the first person shot of falling off the tower, mm-hmm. and then you see Colin Farrell uh, well, witness him land. Yeah. Yeah, witness him land, and just like the blood spurt. His, le- his legs are shattered. His whole body, like yeah, he, he, it is like that scene in Midsummer. His entire body just like is yeah. It destroyed. Yeah. yeah, completely shattered. Yeah, I say. Yeah, Colin Farrell goes over to him and he's st- he's got some last words to say. And yeah, he warns him that Harry is in the vicinity. Yeah, and he's like, "I've got a gun in my inner pocket. Take it." Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. gun is ruined. The gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I love that of all the last lines, you know, like you know, famous last mm. words. I love that his last line of dialogue is like, "I'm gonna die now." Yeah, <laughs> and he just. It's a, it's a really good. It's last a line, great isn't it? last line. Yeah, because yeah. clearly he is. But like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's and it's such good acting. Mm. Like I really appreciate. I mean, I know Colin Farrell's like the breakout in this, and that's, mm. it's more showy. But Brendan Gleeson is so amazing in this film. Mm. Like really, like because how many times have you seen a film where, in an action movie where someone like gets shot and they're like they're just like oh it's my last words oh I'm gonna die it's like yeah. oh and it, it's so cheesy you know yeah, like when yeah. they're like you know they they just get their big monologue out and then mm-hmm. they just go ah, you know it's rubbish. <laughs> like he really acts himself dying in a way that I was very much believing it yeah like, he's like i'm gonna die now and then it feels like he does like yeah. his, enti- his entire body just cha- it's it's just his entire body changes it's great mm. yeah big respect to brendan gleason yep great great actor yep. yeah one of the one of the, one of the better death scenes in movies absolutely yeah. one of the best definitely so yeah then at this point ray finds uh walks out of the bottom and colin farrell sees him and just runs for it mm-hmm. they have a bit of a shootout but colin farrell gets away runs back to the hotel yeah yeah runs back to the hotel uh, runs up to their room and finds his gun in one of the drawers. Yes. And so then that's where we get to the scene of they're going to have a shootout in the hotel, but mm-hmm. the pregnant lady's there. And so she's yeah. like, not in my hotel. Yeah. And so then they, they, have, they have this great conversation, just like, all right, okay, so you know what? I'm going to go and jump out the back window there and swim across the canal and see if I can get away. And then yeah. you can shoot at me from there. Yeah. I think it's also because Colin Farrell is determined that he's not going to kill another kid. And obviously because she's pregnant. Yeah. It's like... There's no way we're going to have this shootout. They've both and, got like, and, and, and like high this, morals. Yeah. yeah, and like this point, Ray Fiennes has said the same thing. Just like, yeah, well, if I kill the kid, then I put a gun in my own mouth and shoot myself. Yes, there which is obviously spot. very important for later. But yeah. yeah, they're both determined that there's no way. But I mean, this pregnant lady doesn't know that they're not going to shoot her. She's just being badass as shit. Yeah. But she's just like, no, not in my fucking hotel. I'm not going anywhere. You guys can sort this out on your own time, but not yeah. in my hotel. Yep. Yeah. 
And she's just literally sat on the stairs and they're just having this quite funny back and forth. Like, would well, you promise that if you run out that you're going to run into the canal yeah. and you're not going the other way? <laughs> Which way is the canal? It's to the fucking right. There's only one canal. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big canal. It's great dialogue. Yeah. It's great. I suppose you've got a gun up there. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We can't stand here all night. Why don't you both put your guns down and go home? Don't be stupid. This is the shootout. Harry? I've got an idea. What? My room faces onto the canal, right? I'm going to go back to my room, jump into the canal, and see if I can swim to the other side and escape. All right. If you go outside and round the corner, you can shoot at me from there and try and get me. That way we leave this lady and her baby out of the whole entire thing. You completely promised to jump in the canal. I don't want to run out there, come back in ten minutes and find you fucking hiding in a cupboard. I completely promise, Harry. I'm not going to risk having another little kid die, am I? So, hang on, I go outside, then I go which way, right or left? You go right, don't you? You can see it from the doorway. It's a big fucking canal. All right, Jesus, I've just got here, haven't I? OK, on account of one, two, three, go, OK? OK. What? Who says it? Oh, you say it. You guys are crazy. And, uh, yeah, so he, he, go, he goes up to his hotel room and jumps out the window um, lands on a convenient ca canal barge that's yeah. that's going away, but still manages to get shot by Ray Fiennes. Yes, like right through the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's a good shot. It is. Yeah, um, I thought it was the driver that got shot because it, it was they they showed it weirdly on on film. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh no, not more collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> but this film does have a very light amount of collateral damage. It does. Yeah, because it's not and, like and anything that is collateral damage is that kid who gets murdered, and it's yeah, it's big. It's, it's important. yeah, it's never just like oh, just background, but it just oh, and also twenty civilians died. It's mm. like everyone who every death matters in this film. Yeah, definitely. every death matters for the plot. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Colin Farrell is shot, but he's alive. He manages to jump off the the barge mm -hmm. and stagger into the film set. Yes, where the the dwarf is still shooting his film, dressed as a little boy. Mm -hmm. and, so so when you clocked what was going to happen by this point. No, actually, I didn't. I didn't. I mean, when it happened, I was like, oh, that makes sense. But yeah. I didn't guess it beforehand. Right, yeah. I think I, I I guessed it just as we came onto the film set. Okay. I'd completely forgotten. I'd forgotten loads of this film. Like, I'd, um, I forgot that Colin Farrell killed a kid. Sure, yeah. Um, wow, okay. Cause it's been, like, what, three or four years since I last watched it? Mm -hmm. I remember really enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, so it was just when we came onto the scene that I guessed that, like, okay, well, the, 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 the dwarf's going to go. Yeah, and Ray Fiennes is going to think it's a kid. And it also made sense how early in the film, for no real reason, they made the dwarf super racist. It's like, yeah, yeah, they didn't want us to feel too bad about the dwarf. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've made him, they've established him as a bad person. So, yeah. yeah, I really thought this was so beautifully shot. Mm -hmm. This scene when he's running through the film set and everyone's mm -hmm. in costume. Oh yeah, it's so good. Like, because yeah. it look, it what, really what looks. What film like, were they doing? <laughs> <laughs> it look, it kind of look, yeah. I don't know what the, the subject of this film is. Where the because like, the dwarf's in like a schoolboy. He looks yeah. like little Jimmy Cranky, yeah. whereas all the other characters are in like old school, like medieval garb. Mm. But it looks really good. It, it adds to this very kind of religious because this a lot of the film has been Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson looking at like classic paintings of mm -hmm. hell and judgment and religion. Mm -hmm. And now it's like he's run into one of those paintings yeah it's really yeah. got that that that's the vibe it's like he's run into judgment day mm. and everything looks a bit biblical mm -hmm. and it, it's really surreal mm. so I, I thought that was a really good thing and then yeah ray fans catches up with him shoots him shoot shoots him again in the back and mm. all the bullets go right Multiple through times, him yeah. and uh one of those bullets goes straight into the into the dwarf's face we don't actually see it no but we see his head has basically been exploded yeah enough that like it's not recognizable, recognizable. that he's not a child yeah so that when ray finds sees the body he thinks he's killed a child yeah and he says like well you've got to still stick to your morals just, just unthinkingly shoots himself in the face yeah yeah kills himself and, uh, instantly yeah yeah and 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 then that's it yeah well then it ends with um colin farrell still alive mm -hmm. although it ends very ambiguously mm. he gets taken into a, an ambulance and we and we get a voiceover from him where he kind of remin he kind of ruminates on what it all means and he's yeah. like well maybe am i in, i'm in am i in purgatory am i in hell is hell bruges <laughs> <laughs> and he's like but at the end of the day i decided i don't want to die yeah but, yeah yeah it's a great ending yeah it really very is. satisfying mm. yeah. and uh yeah, and the girlfriend cries by his side. I mean, fuck the girlfriend. <laughs> She's a terrible character, but but I but I enjoyed the end. I thought it ended really really well. Yeah, yeah, it did. It's mm -hmm. a it just brought enough sort of 
oomph to the to the climax of the film. There was a Definitely. lot going on. There was a lot of action, and it really works. And it's it just... really felt satisfying. It really felt yeah. like it paid, even though it ends ambiguously. It wasn't like, oh man, they're not going to tell us. It was like, no, that's the right way for it to end. Yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's in brief. Good call, Harry. Two in a row films. I would say close to ten out of ten. Two genuinely great films. All right, should we do drinking games then? Mm-hmm. Although this film is very well suited. Absolutely, yeah. So first of all, drink every time anybody swears. Oh, sure. I mean, God, you die. It's, it, it's, it's the standard drinking game for this, sure. and, and my God. it's a Yeah, it's a pretty foul mouth movie. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a drink every time somebody, particularly Colin Farrell, says something problematic. I've got that too, yeah. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there, we haven't talked about it. There's a lot of homophobia in this movie, which is the main reason I was a little bit conflicted on this movie because mm, it felt yeah. kind of unnecessary like yeah. it didn't serve the plot in any meaningful way yeah like not all of the not all of the offensive stuff in here is kind of sort of undone by being funny no not at all yeah because it's not all funny no it's just a lot of weird. it is just being offensive i was just like i wasn't like offended to my very co- i actually don't get offended very easily like no and but it was just more like why is this here yeah like the scene when he shoots the guy in the eye mm-hmm. and he's just like i can't believe it. in my day all the all the bald guys weren't fucking puffed us. it's just mm-hmm. like it's just very virulently homophobic and it's like what is this telling me mm. what, what what why is this been inserted in the movie like if it has a point fine but i didn't understand why it was there yeah i i don't i don't think that was a deliberate thing i think mm. that was that was actually written as inappropriate mm. or oh, sorry that was actually inappropriately written sure then by puffter they just meant wimp yeah sure and maybe i don't know maybe irish people talk like that i don't know but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I did notice that, like, for example, initial when when Colin Farrell meets Jimmy, the little person, mm-hmm. and he, he's like, "Oh, they're filming a midget," and he calls him a midget, mm-hmm. and then Chloe, his girlfriend, says, "Oh, he prefers to be called a dwarf." Mm-hmm. And there's a scene later on when he's talking about the same guy. He's, "Oh, the midget." Oh, sorry, I mean the dwarf. Mm-hmm. Like he corrects himself. Yeah. And he, he betters himself. He, he actually pays attention and I mean that uses was... the language that he is preferred. Yes, but that was in the same line when he said, "Like it's." You know, it's it's tipped in the balance like a like a big fat black girl sitting on a seesaw. Yeah, well, that's with what a I'm, midget on the sorry, a dwarf on the other that's side. That's what I mean. That, it's, that's that's what he said. It's like, whoa, yeah. that was one hell of a line. Yeah, that's what I mean. And it's that, weird. Yeah, and there is one black woman in this, and it's I mean, and, it's and the it's, prostitute it's, who has no lines. It's yeah. prostitute number two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. This film, I, I remember also finding that weird about three billboards. I don't think this guy Martin McDonough is very good on race because three billboards. And, kind of fine with because it's in it it, it it was set in a fairly white area and it was no but it, i, I and, remember and, having and, like and, a and, black it, i remember three billboards had two black characters who weren't connected who randomly got together mm-hmm. do you remember that you probably have to rewatch it no, they're no, both no, like I, very minor but no i completely forgot there was any it's very it's other. very minor but it's also kind of awkward yeah but I don't know, yeah there's just a lot of stuff like that mm-hmm. yeah so it wasn't enough to ruin the film for me but i was just like i just don't understand exactly why this Mm. needs to be here mm-hmm. like you could make them be foul-mouthed and you know rough around the edges without that mm-hmm. i don't know because it doesn't feel like he be- that informs the character in any positive kind of way but, yeah yeah so but anyway whatever drink homophobia it's yeah there. you might as well drink it's all, all, right. what else are you gonna do with it <laughs> drink for every creative insult oh sure yeah what was I your mean, favorite some of them are creative some of them are very uncreative but that's where the creativity lies like sure, you're, yeah. you're cunting kids yeah, you're you're a fucking inanimate object. Did yeah. really make me laugh. I can't lie. It really made me laugh. It's just, just me, me too. It's such honest, a petty yeah. thing to say. Yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> like you can't really dig down and be like, "Oh, that's really offensive." It's not. It's just so petty. It's like no. It's, like, it's I, what I, you I say. You're like, I want yeah. to insult you. I can't think of an insult. I'll just mirror I'm just what gonna, you said to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I am rubber. You are glue. Yeah, yeah. Like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just any kind of insult that happens that's that just really makes you laugh not just because of how how it was delivered but just how it's written and yeah absolutely yeah. yeah i agree there's a lot of that yeah this film comes together very well it very much does yeah uh, okay here's a big one mm-hmm. drink every time colin farrell shits on bruges <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, just says mean things about this i was like why having never been to bruges i was like mm-hmm. why is he being so negative about this perfectly lovely little town it looks yeah, pretty yeah like, i don't get why you'd be so negative about it like it's, it's yeah i mean it's 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 clearly he's just not happy there it, but it's like, it's boring at the worst sure yeah but, i mean this film really triggered my desire to go traveling because i've been obviously yeah, not same. been able to for like a year so like the scenes when he's on a train i was just, yeah, I was I was just like, like oh, oh wanna... to be on a train going through europe oh my god mm. god it sounds so white 
No, it's true. But I'm just saying, I was like, just just to be in a foreign city, just to be wandering around and have that freedom. I'm mm. just, I would, yeah, I miss it. I yeah. can't, I can't wait till I can do it again next year. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, last one I've got is drink. So if you've been there, drink whenever you recognize the location. Okay, drink for Bruges tourism. Yeah, yeah very good. Bruges porn. What was your favorite part of Bruges? If, if there was one thing, if I was to go to Bruges tomorrow and I had time to do one thing, what me, what would you recommend me do in Bruges? Uh, <clears throat> we did a tour of a brewery. Okay, that sounds very you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it, it was really good because when they talk you, I mean, you could probably go to any brewery tour and they, they would sure, give you yeah. this. But just when they talk you through the beer and then give you the beer at the end. Mm. You feel like you've earned that beer because you've it's, listened to a lot of boring well, it's, stuff. It's, yeah. it's, it's not just that you've earned the beer because you've been waiting an hour for beer and, you, and you've been told all about the beer. Yeah. But just you've been told about it so much that you just appreciate it way more. Sure, yeah. And also, at its heart, it's still delicious Belgian beer. Yeah. And there's a guy talking about it who's just really passionate about how much he loves this beer. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. Um, also, in that main city square where, where the tower is and where everything happens in this movie pretty much mm -hmm. there was one bar that we went to that just had a balcony a little bit up and it was just nice to be just that much raised up um and still have like a fantastic view of the square and it was very mm. picturesque oh very good yeah i, I love a, i love a balcony bar or like yeah. a, a, a rooftop bar yeah. Good. yeah they, they do good chips there as well oh no yeah well belgium is famous for its chips mm. pommes frites yeah. belgium is very good for chips so, yeah. yeah so yeah that's Bruges. Okay, great. Well, there's a bit of a tourist information for Bruges for you, if you ever choose to go. Um, my drinking game is drink every time Colin Farrell creatively insults somebody. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just insults someone, maybe not creatively. It's not It's not so much that he's creative, it's just the more he's, like, very funny. Yeah. 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 But, like, yes, the, the, the scene with the, the American guy is hysterical. It really is just <laughs> so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because it starts with him genuinely trying to be helpful. I don't think he starts off trying to be mean. No. I mean, he's very rude, mm -hmm. but he just has no filter. Yeah. I but think I think his advice comes from a positive. He's like, he's not just being a, a dick. He's like, look, you're never going to get up those stairs. You're very large. <laughs> but they're, they're just not taking it in. He's like, well, you're fucking elephants. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. The, the, yeah. He, aimed, he aimed well. He aimed well at first, but he has no patience. And yeah, yeah when the guy starts chasing, he's like, fuck off, fatty. It, oh, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know why, but fuck off, fatty just made me like die laughing. It was just his <laughs> delivery of it just really tickled me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Been to the top of the tower? Yeah. Yeah. It's rubbish. It is. Guidebook says it's a must-see. Well, you lot ain't going up there. Pardon me? Why? I mean, it's all windy stairs. I'm not being funny. What exactly are you trying to say? What exactly am I trying to say? Is there a bunch of fucking elephants? Why you? Come on, leave it, fuzzy. Okay, listen, well, if you've enjoyed that and you feel like you, you didn't quite get enough drinking games there, you want some more, well, if you were to become a Patreon of ours by going to patreon.com slash set, you can get some extended episodes, mm -hmm. you know, more drinking games, more sequel ideas, more listen submissions, more bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. If you do that, you also get a few other bonus features, such as a, a review show where we review films that we've seen in some context, yeah. At the like, moment, it's like a lot you, of Netflix. You, you used to say cinema releases. Is it current releases? Which, yeah, things that have come out recently. So at the moment, there's no cinema, but we're, we're watching a lot of Netflix stuff. So, for example, the most recent things we've watched have been um, Vampire Bears, Vampires vs. Brooklyn and The Dead Don't Die. What was that, what was that terrible, boring, depressing film you made me watch? The Dead Don't Die? Not The Dead Don't Die. What was it called? Uh, or The Devil All The Time. The Devil, Devil All, all the, time. the Time. Hated it, but we reviewed it. Um, really hated <laughs> so if, you, if you're interested in what that film is you can yeah. listen to our review so you don't need to watch we're it. about to do the princess switch 2 switched again oh yes much to discuss and <laughs> uh, we did Greenland as well with yeah. uh, what's his face Gerard uh, Butler Ger Ger Gerard Butler yes Again, hated it, but we had a lot to discuss. So yeah. yeah. Now there's some, there's some there's some good reviews there if I say so yeah. myself. So yeah, that's all available at patreon.com slash beyond the box set, where there are also some extra bonus features that I can't be us talking about right now. Wow, so. okay. Let's see, Alex. Uh, what do you think of Jaws, which is at ninety seven percent run tomatoes? I find it to be anti shark propaganda. What do you feel about the Entourage movie, which is at a meager thirty three percent? I think they finally got Hollywood right. How about It Follows, ninety seven percent? Worse than your parents giving you the sex is evil talk. 
How do you feel about Juno, which is at 94%? That would be a movie that celebrates a teenage homewrecker. Uh, how about Bewitched at 25%? Best television adaptation ever put to film. How do you feel about American Hustle at a towering 93%? Overwrought awards bait. Righteous Kill, 19%. The movie that Michael Mann wishes he had made when he created Heat. Sounds about right. I'm Julio. I'm Alex, and we are the Contrarians. As you can tell, our thing is that we rage against the Rotten Tomatoes machine. Regardless of what we really feel. Find us on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn. Facebook, Twitter, we're everywhere. Do you want to move on to sequels then? Sure, go ahead. Right, let's do it. Uh, do you want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. So I have two ideas this week. Okay. So they're both kind of based on the fact that the end of this film is very what's the word? ambiguous. It's very ambiguous, the end yeah. of this film. Yeah. So, and I think it leaves a lot open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. So the first one I've done is an, is more about the relationship between Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. Because Brendan Gleeson is clearly very protective of Colin Farrell. Yeah. And we don't get a lot of backstory for what their lives are. We get obviously that in London, Colin Farrell, he, we know he grew up in Dublin. He mm -hmm. mentions that. And at some point he goes to London, does this hit on the Irish, on the on the priest. Brendan Gleeson saves him and they end up on the run. Yeah. But it doesn't really tell you how they know each other or why they should care about each other. No. Nope. How long they've known each other. Mm -hmm. So I thought that'd be like really interesting to explore. Okay. And especially if you want to bring them both back, which I think, because oh, yeah, you, you could to. say Colin Farrell survived. There's no way Brendan Gleeson survived this movie. No, he is, no, he is yeah. dead. Yeah. And he's so wonderful. I, I, like, I, I did think about it. Like, you know, maybe he didn't die. Maybe he just passed out and he was recovered. But like, y you briefly see that all his limbs are so mangled. Like, no, he, he would, gets he... shot in the neck, <laughs> jumps off a building, his shot, outsides shot in the neck are on the, and the stomach. And the stomach. Jumps for building. His outsides are on the inside. His legs are shattered. Yeah. He's not living through this movie. It's, it's not happening. And also... Unless you're going to do a zombie or a ghost movie, he's yeah. gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Carry on. So, I was like, no, I want to bring him back. I would like to explore why these two characters are so loyal to each other and what does this mean? Yeah. And I thought maybe you could tie in a little bit of Brendan Gleeson's the hints of the backstory, which mm. we don't know how much is true and how much is not in this film because it's all very ambiguous. Mm -hmm. But that scene when they all are doing cocaine in Jimmy the Dwarf's apartments or whatever that might be when they're talking about the race war and he says well i had a wife who was black mm. who got murdered in 1976 and yeah. i loved her very much yeah i thought okay maybe you could tie that into it so i was thinking okay so he's obviously a lot older than colin farrell mm -hmm. so maybe he had a kid mm -hmm. maybe he had a son with his wife who was murdered who and maybe the son was murdered at the same time maybe there was like a okay maybe, maybe it was like you know ireland had a lot of troubles you know maybe it was like an ira thing or a, you know sure. whatever who knows or a gang a gangland thing mm -hmm. i don't know so his wife and his only son were killed in the same hit job or something mm -hmm. leaving him on his own and i'm thinking maybe shortly after that or maybe years after that who knows probably years after that but maybe years after that he runs into colin farrell and sees in him what sees him as like a surrogate son kind of thing like mm. sees in him what he would have seen in his own son right yeah, and yeah. it opens okay. up this part maybe he, uh, actually yeah that's it so maybe he had a wife a lovely wife and a lovely son and he was just a regular guy he wasn't a hitman he was just a guy trying to make a living and have a family and live a normal life mm -hmm. and then for whatever reason his, his family got caught up in shit you know in ireland there was a lot of doubt, trouble at the time and his wife is murdered and his son is murdered. And maybe that's why he became a hitman because mm -hmm. he had nothing else to live for. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, I'm a dead man walking. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, and he sinks into a life of crime and just maybe is also seeking revenge initially. It just, maybe that's his back. Maybe the first half of this film. Oh, you could cast Donald. Uh, you can tell I'm making this as I go up, as I go along. Sure. <laughs> but I feel like I'm on a roll here. You could cast Donald Gleeson, famously oh, yeah. Brendan Gleeson's actual son. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the Star Wars trilogy and all that stuff. Yeah. He could play young Brendan Gleeson. Okay. Yeah. As in when he was married to his wife and sure. when he loses his son. Sure. And maybe from that horrible traumatic experience of losing his wife and son, he seeks revenge, mm -hmm. gets wrapped up in the crime world, mm -hmm. gets revenge, kills whoever killed his wife and son. And then from that because he's got nothing to live for just drifts into being a hitman and that mm. becomes his full-time job yeah and he spends like 20 years just being a hitman he doesn't care about anyone at all he's just he's dead inside he doesn't care about anything mm -hmm. he's just he's the perfect hitman because he's not emotional he's just he does the job yeah and then at some point he gets paired with colin farrell who's on his first job okay years later they end up in london for whatever reason maybe they're just in yeah. london literally to do a hit because they've clearly both come from dublin yeah yeah and maybe just working with colin farrell he gets all... He, Colin Farrell was born maybe the same year as his son. 
mm-hmm. and maybe he just sees in his sees in Colin Farrell the the son that he lost, and he just starts to really feel a strong sense of like parenthood and protectiveness towards mm. him and really just wants to protect him yeah and that's why when the hit goes wrong and colin farrell actually killed accidentally kills the kid mm-hmm. brendan gleason saves him takes him to bruges mm-hmm. and then when harry ray finds calls him and says you need to kill him mm-hmm. he can't do it because he sees him as a, as a son yes and that's why they're and that's what their relationship is yeah no that that works so yeah i just want a prequel i guess that just explores that whole relationship and why they you know why they cared so much about each other well, more so, more so why Brendan Gleeson cared so much about Colin Farrell because it felt like a little bit one sided. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. I mean, Colin Farrell certainly cared about Rafe, about him as well, but not he to the same. He had his own things going on. He had his own stuff going on, but maybe yeah. I guess on some level he recognised that this guy was, you know, looking out for him. Mm. But I also thought you could. They oh, definitely grew to like each other over the film. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. So I think that would add an extra emotional kick to the movie. Mm-hmm. But I was also thinking perhaps you could also look at the hit that Colin Farrell takes out for the priest, the Irish priest played mm-hmm. by Kieran Hines. Yeah. What was that all about? Yeah, totally. Why would a priest be involved in a hit job? Well, is a... he a gangster priest? Is he a child molester? Yeah, probably the latter, I'd, I'd say. Sure. Well, that's it. You don't know. So it could, it Cause could that, be... Because that's definitely within character for Ray Fiennes to be like, no, this guy needs to go. Sure, yeah, he's broken the code. Yeah. yeah. I'd say that maybe the, maybe the priest, if you did want to bring him in, Maybe he was an informant to Ray Fiennes. Sure. And so like he would... Because he takes confessions. So exactly, he, he exactly, hears yeah. people's darkest sins. Yeah, yeah. he hears all these, all these dark sins and, he's, and Ray Fiennes has got them on payroll or something. And okay, so, and so I Ray like Fiennes that. is basically just sort of sifting through all the people just like, okay, that guy cheated on his wife. Yeah, not great, but it's fine. Not, I'm um, not interested like, in that, yeah. Yeah, that, that guy did that. That guy did that. That guy... Oh, he needs to go. And then suddenly, you know, oh, oh, the priest has, oh, the priest has been caught doing something. He was my guy. Okay, so the priest is Ray Fiennes' personal like mm. priest, whatever. And, and he but, then, tell, but then he's gone and broken Ray He's Fiennes broken code. the code because it turns out he gets caught up in some kind of priest scandal where he's yeah. been like, molesting children or like turning a blind eye to child abuse or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that means he has to die. That's yeah. good, yeah, but in the process. Oh, yeah, turning a blind eye, that's, that's, that's good, actually, because then it could be like uh, maybe, maybe Ray Fiennes finds out from somebody else that like, oh, this guy's a... So this somebody else, this brand new character, mm. is a child molester. Yes, and then he's like, "Wait, why didn't my priest tell me about this?" Because he turned a blind eye. He yeah, turned, and they it could, could all find out there's the... this whole scandal going on. Yeah, it could all be about the priest scandal. That's yeah, that's really good. And so then he hires Colin mm-hmm. Farrell to hit the priest, mm-hmm. and then what happens happens. Brendan Gleeson saves him, and we arrive in the original movie. But it's just explaining why all the characters have these very close knit relationships. You could also yeah. maybe have a whole bit about why Brendan Gleeson and Ray Fiennes, how they became mm-hmm. like colleagues and why they have deep respect for each other mm. but also the respect doesn't mean that they won't potentially kill each other like no just really dig into the backstory i think that could be a really good story yeah so yeah that, that, that's my first one and that is in bruges 2 in brotherhood oh nice because they're you know it's about how they all become brothers in arms i guess yeah so, yeah yeah very good so mine i'll give you the title later um so this one picks up immediately after the close of the original mm-hmm. and uh colin farrell has been well colin farrell is ray um ray has been airlifted to hospital back in london where mm-hmm. he's been cr- treated for his injuries okay hours later chloe is allowed to go in and visit him and he's, she's flown over from she, bruges to london yeah she uh, really is in in deep with this guy <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the original film did put that no sure there, no no i'm not i'm not disputing i'm just like wow yeah she really cares okay yeah. go on. well maybe she's concerned that he doesn't have anybody else True, sure, yeah. And he doesn't. He doesn't. He clearly does not know. So, not anymore. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got some dialogue here. No, I will not be trying to do an Irish and a Belgian accent. So, yeah, Ray just, he sort of comes to, wakes up just a little bit, and he's like, Chloe. And he's like, oh, Ray, the doctors say you're very badly in. No, wait. Are you sure you don't want me to be Chloe? Just it's clear character definition. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It's mainly you going to be talking on this one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So am I being Chloe? Yeah, I just say the word Chloe. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into this one, didn't I? <laughs> okay. So start from the top. Chloe. Oh Ray, the doctors say you are badly injured. I'm trying for a Belgian accent, I don't know. It's not the most obvious one to do. And Ray again murmurs, Chloe. You've got a punctured lung, your liver has been destroyed, you've got major internal bleeding, and your spine is injured. 
So basically, she just keeps interrupting him, not letting him speak. And he oh, keeps, I see. Okay. So he keeps going, Chloe. What is it, Ray? C- Chloe. Really? Anything? Name it. Oh, my God, woman, shut the fuck up. <gasps> Chloe has a very stunned look on her face. Johnny okay. did not need to act that. Well, I chose to. <laughs> I was in the moment. I was in character. I'm sorry, but just just tell me one thing. Are we still in Bruges? No, we're in London. Well, thank the fucking Lord. They're going to take you into surgery, Ray. Well, as long as they don't take me into surgery in fucking Bruges, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> He's made a decision. He just anything, anything but Bruges. Yeah, anything but Bruges. Yeah, he'd rather be dead in London than alive in Bruges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so shortly afterwards, the doctor comes in and prepares him for surgery, mm-hmm. placing a mask over his face and asking him to count backwards from ten. Sure, he doesn't even get to nine before he blacks out. Mm-hmm. Chloe gives him a kiss on the forehead, and they wheel him down to the operating theater as the camera fades to black. Okay, he wakes up in a hotel room bed, back in Bruges, not in a hospital. He looks a little confused and several years older. Uh huh. Let's say he was de aged for the oh, first bit. Has he, Colin be, a bit, a has, bit he be, has he got amnesia? Has he lost years of his life? Maybe it's up for you to make your own theories here. Okay. Um, he pulls the quilt down to check for bullet wounds in his chest because obviously he got very shot up in the first film. Okay. Um, revealing that Colin Farrell has still got it. Okay, great. Damn, he's got it good. <laughs> okay, just a, a needless <laughs> Colin Farrell topless scene you just queer about it. Yeah, yeah. Great, sure. Um, but there are no bullet wounds at all. Okay. Nothing at He's all. He's clean as a whistle. Yeah. Okay. And so he says out loud, that was a fucking great surgeon. Mm-hmm. Um, and he gets up and goes over to the window and, he see, and we see his happy little face drop. He is back in Bruges. Oh, no. He runs downstairs and waiting for him in the restaurant of the hotel is Brendan Gleeson. Oh, is it like Groundhog Day? No. And so he says, Ken, what the fuck are you doing here? Didn't you well, actually went Irish then? Go for it. Lean into it. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. <laughs> Ken, what the fuck are you doing here? Didn't you die? No, I can't do Irish. Okay. Cool. I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna text this to you. Oh, there's more dialogue. Okay, great. You get to be Brendan Gleeson. Cool. Okay, I'm, I'm more comfortable with Irish than I was with Belgian. So. Hi, Ray. Good to see you. <laughs> That's not too bad. I'm not gonna try. Why are we back in fucking Bruges? Are we in Bruges? Is that what you see? What What do you fucking mean? This isn't Bruges, Ray. Well, thank fuck. Where is it then? Purgatory. Ah, fuck. Well, at least it's not fucking Bruges. But Ray, if you see him fucking Bruges, then it is fucking Bruges. Fuck, so why are we in purgatory? I guess we're both dead, but the Lord doesn't know yet where to put us. But we're fucking hit, man. Isn't it obvious where to put us? Yeah, but I sacrificed myself for you, Ray, and you felt suicidal about shooting that kid, so maybe that's enough to save us from hell. So what now then? And that's, that's that's literally all I've got. So oh, okay. So basically, they're both stuck in purgatory. Okay. And uh, Colin Farrell sees purgatory as Bruges. Okay. Um, we do have yet to work out what Brendan Gleeson is seeing purgatory as. Mm-hmm. Um, it could just be waiting in a restaurant to be served and never being served. Sure. Yeah. Well, this is interesting because actually my second idea is pretty much exactly the same. Cool. <laughs> cool. 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 <laughs> I mean, but it, it, it's a different angle, so it's probably worth discussing. Yeah. So yeah, I had the same thought because obviously the end of this film has Colin Farrell's voiceover where he's like, is Bruges purgatory mm. or is it hell? Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe it is. See, so, no, see no, first of all, I forgot that voiceover. So mm. so this is a, an original uh, original travel idea. Okay, sure. Great. But uh, it kind of came from when, like you said, before, when I said to, said to you before the recording, like, John, I've got nothing here. You <laughs> said like, well, did he die at the end? Did he not? And I thought to myself like, well, of course he didn't die because how else am I going to write a sequel? Oh, no, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I mean, I, I was I was throwing you some pretty easy let's, stuff there. Yeah, let's, so. let's think outside of this box. Sure. Well, good for you. But yeah, I was thinking maybe it is purgatory, and I was thinking maybe Ken Brendan Gleeson's character yeah. is Colin Farrell's guardian angel. Ah, that works. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like he really did kill the kid. Mm-hmm. That's a real thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Because Brendan Gleeson's all about his redemption. And Brendan Gleeson also seems very zen in this movie. Like, mm. he, he fully accepts his own death. Yeah. He's just he's very just with it and calm and collected. And he mm. knows he's, he's perfectly comfortable with mm. if he has to die, he has to die. Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah, maybe it's kind of like almost like Groundhog Day. Mm. So Colin Farrell gets shot up and he dies mm. at the end of the film. Yeah. And then he wakes up and it's back on the first day he arrives back in Bruges again. Okay. And it's like Groundhog Day. He Every time he, he dies... Mm. He ends up back in Bruges again and the mm-hmm. cycle repeats itself. Mm-hmm. But not like every 
It's, it's, it's not like a one day cycle, is it? No, it's just as long as he can survive it, basically. Right, yeah, yeah. He keeps getting himself killed. Okay. And that could be a strain of comedy. Like each time he gets he gets himself killed, it's in more ridiculous circumstances. Yeah, totally. But each time he goes around, he's bettering himself. Yeah. Like he's not calling the the dwarf a midget. Mm-hmm. He's not being racist. He's not punching women in the face. You know, uh, yeah, but yeah. every time he just gets it slightly better. It's not like he immediately gets better. It's like every time he does most things wrong, yeah. but he gets one thing better. And each time he just gets a little bit better and a little bit better. Yeah. But in the entire process, Ken is guarding him. And like Ken's like a guardian angel, but like a rough around the edges guardian angel who's mm-hmm. been through a lot of shit and doesn't really have time for anything. Mm. So he's, you know, that's why he's kind of world weary and, you know, not really into the whole saving people scenario, but he just has a deep connection with Ray, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I, I really like that. Yeah. I just like the idea of it being Groundhog Day. And maybe he even realizes... I, that did, I did sort of think of that as well. Like I was, I was, I was trying to think, like, how could I do a, a, a Groundhog Day of this? But, like, mm. they always... Those Groundhog Day scenarios, they always start off with, like, a series of scenes that have very specific moments in them. Mm-hmm. Just because then they can always come back and... Like remind yeah. you of those moments, sure. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't quite picture it in this. Well, he's really trying to redeem himself for kill- from killing a kid. Mm. Like he needs to find a way to gain forgiveness and self acceptance for the fact that he was he literally shot a kid in the head. Yeah, and that's going to be very difficult. Mm-hmm. So maybe like ultimately he gets to a point where he sa- rather than the dwarf getting shot, he saves the dwarf's life, mm-hmm. and then that's what redeems him. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, sure, yeah. So and maybe he, so, he even, so, so he 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 saved the other kid. That's yeah, exactly. Not that the dwarf is a kid, but, no, like, but at least like, he's saved a life. You know, he's yeah, he's taken he's taken a life and he's saved a life. Yeah. yeah, and maybe he makes a better impact on all. Like, because if you if you think of the original film, mm-hmm. like every decision Colin Farrell makes hurts somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, he shoots the guy in the face and blinds him forever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess Chloe's okay, but you know, she gets dragged along the ride. Yeah, Jimmy the dwarf gets killed. Ken gets killed. Mm-hmm. I still think Ken's the guardian angel. So he doesn't really mind being killed mm-hmm. or like, or, or like he accepts it and it's fine. It's part of his sacrifice. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, as it goes on, he has to find a way to live the perfect day in Bruges, which mm-hmm. he fucking hates. He <laughs> hates that town. Yeah. He has to try and find a perfect day where he can enjoy Bruges and also where everyone lives. Yeah. And everyone ends up better. So he teaches Jimmy the dwarf to not be racist anymore. Mm-hmm. Maybe he gets in together with, you know, well, maybe, maybe he makes a scenario where they, they, have that night where they take all the drugs, mm. but if they don't say anything racist, then it turns out that the black prostitute has some really interesting things to say. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> if they just only listened. Yeah, because she was always there. So maybe he has to engineer the perfect scenario where Jimmy the dwarf actually says, "Hey, random black prostitute extra, what's your backstory? Tell me your life, and I'm interested, and I'm going to hear your narrative." Mm-hmm. And it makes him a better person. He actually listens. Yeah, and maybe they they form a deep connection and fall in love. Mm. Yeah, and then you know they're both better people for it. Yeah. And yeah, he tells Chloe to respect herself more and not to just like bail him out every time. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't shoot the guy in the face. He encourages the skinhead guy to just be a better person mm-hmm. w- without having to blind him. Yeah. And yeah, and Ken lives and he makes his peace with Harry and everyone. Yeah, it's, it's just like every day he's just to work harder and harder to get to a happy ending, basically. Yeah. That's the point. It's, it, it really is just Groundhog Day. Yeah, no, that, that works well. Yeah. And so I've, got, is... I've got a little finish to that as well. Go for it, yeah. Um, the one he does eventually get the perfect day in, sure. in, in Bruges mm-hmm. and then nobody dies and everything like that. He finally escapes Bruges. It's the and, only way. And he wakes up from surgery. Yes. Just to bring it back full circle with the, with the, with idea, idea, I, with, sure, with the yeah. idea that I started. And he, he's not, and he's no longer in Bruges. He wait, Yeah. He wakes up from surgery. He's back in London. Mm. Um, Chloe is there by his side and he is a very changed man. He is no longer rude and horrible and extremely racist. And it turns out she doesn't actually like that. No, that's what she's into. So she's like, well, <laughs> so, bye. So she, she leaves him, but she leaves him a better person. Yeah, and, he, and he's escaped from Bruges. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Perfect. So that was In Bruges 2, In Purgatory. Nice. Okay, well, I've got a better one. I called it In Brugatory. In, that's actually better. Yeah. In, in Brugatory. Let's go with that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, should we move on to listener submissions? Mm-hmm. Cool. So I have a few here. Uh, John Harmon III, our first member of an ancestral dynasty i think <laughs> in john halman the third said in bruges too in liege okay it's another belgian city in liege right it's the, oh, other, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the other side of belgium yeah did you, did you have you been to liege no i don't think so yeah well adam capitanio said out bruges in bruges out bruges uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. i don't know if that's like all the characters are gay like it's in and out or, <laughs> or, or it's just like get out of bruges who knows yeah. the exact same film but everybody's gay sure yeah and it's not brought up much no well initially i'm stuck i mistook the homophobia for like inclusiveness mm-hmm. like in the first scene when colin farrell and 
Brendan Gleeson are in the pub and he's like, I'll have a big gay beer for my friend and a big straight beer for me. And I was like, yeah. well, it's a bit clumsy, but are we saying Brendan Gleeson's gay? And yeah. I, clearly he was not. No. But yeah, fine. <laughs> now I was disappointed. Mm. But uh, yeah, so a, a version of this film where everyone's gay would be a nice fix, I guess. Yeah. For that problem. Yeah. This is the one that made me laugh when I was putting this together and you accused me of laughing at my own jokes, which I was not. <laughs> uh, Graham Kitchen said, In Bruges 2, Electric Brugelou. Oh, nice. See, that's nice. funny. That's yeah. worth a chuckle. Electric <laughs> Brugelou. Dennis Fanning said, We follow the Canadian guy as he travels Europe, constantly getting into arguments and being blamed for John Lennon's death. Because <laughs> that's what uh, Colin Farrell says mm. when he punches the Canadian guy. He's like, That's for John Lennon, you fucking Yankee or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty good gabriel canada said an american werewolf in bruges nice sequel to an american werewolf in london and paris of course yeah yeah franchise matthew jacarino said after brexit the whole movie takes place in an airport customs office (laughs) depressing but accurate (laughs) yeah over on twitter at historic hole at historic hole (laughs) for sure said i never thought about a sequel but if it involves ray then that would ruin the ambiguous ending to the first film, yeah. which is true. Fair yeah. enough. Yes. A loosely connected plot with new main characters, like associates of Harry, maybe keep the dark humor and the philosophical stuff, and maybe the supporting characters, like Marie, the pregnant lady, Eric, the Eric, the blind guy mm-hmm. who gets shot, and Yuri, the guy who gives him the gun. Maybe mm-hmm. maybe it's just all the supporting characters show up and they get their own movie. Sure, so I like to be something there. As long That's as interesting. It, yeah. As long as I've got the right writing team on it that can yeah. that, that, that can pad it well. Yeah. So I yeah I like I like the principle of that. Where it's like you're right. The, this film deliberately ends ambiguously. So maybe it's mm. not for us to say, oh, actually he lived. It's fine. Yeah. Maybe it's just like the supporting characters get a movie. Yeah. So very good. And finally, Cat Butt at Cat Butt. We got some great names this week on Twitter. <laughs> said, I feel like there's scope for Ray Fiennes' character Harry to go into testing the structural integrity of multiple pieces of office equipment <laughs> and seeing which one is the worst kind of fucking inanimate object. Oh, God. So, yeah. <laughs> what what an idea. That's a good one. Yeah, he just becomes a, a tester. So, thank you, everybody, for those sequel ideas. We ask for your listener submissions every week, a few days before we record, by putting posts out on Facebook and Twitter where you can post your ideas. So make sure you like and follow our pages if you don't want to miss out. To listen to more episodes of Beyond the Box Set, you can subscribe and browse our back catalogue on any podcasting platform, including iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and many others, all of which you can also leave a five-star review if you like. It really helps us to reach new listeners, so please do consider it. As mentioned earlier, we're also available on Patreon, which is exclusively for the people who would rate us more than five stars if they could. You can find all the relevant links in the description below or at beyondtheboxset.com. And next week, Harry... Mm -hmm. It's back to me. Last film of the year. Indeed. Well, you have set me up very nicely here. Mm-hmm. Like I did not, I could never have anticipated that you would set me up so perfectly on this. Okay. Because uh, you picked this film in Bruges. Yeah. Starring Colin Farrell. Yeah. And it turns out, despite the fact that we've never done him before, mm-hmm. I also had a Colin Farrell film in my back pocket. Do you, uh, want, do you right. remember like last time I had a pick? Yeah. And I, I said you I had said three films. Three, yeah. Yeah. And I made you roll the dice. Yeah. One of the films that didn't land mm-hmm. was a Colin Farrell film. Okay. And so I'm going to pick it now. What was the third one you're not going to pick? It was The Snowman. Okay. What is I, it? I just thought Winter not good. In the eye. No, no, no. Ah. The one with, the one where, um, what's his face? Oh, sexy German. What's he called? Uh, Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender, yeah. I, I love how you got that immediately. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I knew what you meant. I was just like... The one where Michael I, I, Fass... I just wanted to double check. Like, yeah. Are there any other sexy Germans? Yeah, the one where Michael Fassbender plays Harry Hole. Terrible character name. We, we might do it in January. Have I seen this? No, you haven't. Okay. It came out last... It was a complete flop. Mm. It came out last year. It's called The Snowman. It's based on a crime novel that was a big hit. Oh, I'm... I vaguely remember the trailer for It was this. a huge failure. It was yeah. a huge flop. We didn't even see it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But I've heard it's like a disaster in a good way. Like, yeah. Stop, Michael Fassbender. Stop picking disaster movies. Well, we're, I'm, we're not doing it, but I might do it in January. Okay. But Michael Fassbender literally plays a detective called Harry Hole. Great. And apparently there, at no point does the film acknowledge that that's funny. <laughs> like, it doesn't even go there. Okay. So I'm intrigued. But that's not what we're doing this week. So yeah. relax. But this may be a bad movie. Yep. It is another flop. Great. Um, Great. Thank you. It's a Colin Farrell movie. Okay. It's called A Winter's Tale. A Winter's Tale. Yep. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Is it Christmassy? It's called A Winter's Tale. So I, I can only assume. Okay. I don't know. But we're doing alternative films this year. So, you know, I'm just leaning into that. So Sure. We'll see. 
I think it will be entertaining. Um, better bloody hope so. I hope so too. I've not seen it either, so we know it's, we're going in blind. All right, cool. So join us next week for A Winter's Tale starring Colin Farrell. Last film of the Christmas season. Yeah. And of the year. And I'll be doing some sort of a... Uh, a we'll bonus. do a year-end wrap-up, yeah. Yeah. We'll do, we'll, we'll do some. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, because we've only seen about one film in the cinema. It's been depressing, <laughs> but we'll, we'll figure something out, yeah. yeah. It's, it'll be fine. It'll be great. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for subscribing. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. See you next week. Bye. Bye. hookers and a racist dwarf. I think I'm heading home.